time of trials in our life is usually the most blessed ones. Most of the time, we have to stand in faith for our views given by God, to stand in faith for images given by God, and to be steadfast in faith that God has given to us. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. Just break the shackles that the devil sets up for you. You know, the devil tries to set you up into different traps. And then you see one trouble after another one, one by one, one by one, they shoot you like a machine gun. And these problems have only one goal, to convince you that everything is bad in your life and it's gonna get worse. Look, going through life, meditating on it, you can see clearly that the devil is such a big liar and deceiver. The Bible tells us about specific Satan attacks and how we all have to stay alert. By the way, did you notice that he always wants to attack you? when you are usually not ready. The devil is always watching you. And he often attacks when you're tired or upset or you did something wrong. At that moment, when you did wrong, and maybe you even committed a sin, and to your surprise, somebody turned back on you. And on top of it, for example, your car is broken, or you got robbed, or something else happened. Basically, Satan wants to put lies around you with these negative situations happening in your life. And on top of it, he wants you to believe that is all from God. And for a moment, you really don't get it all, and you think, oh, that's the devil did, but on the other side, you feel like you're twisted inside, and you think, God, let it all happen, and everything is not for my good. And then you have negative thoughts and fear before God that he's against you and he doesn't really love you, and he doesn't want to support you in these moments. And at the end of it, you're getting a feeling that is true. Dear friends, I want to tell you about the real things that I was going through. Right from the beginning, God was walking me through difficulties. I didn't understand why, but later I figured that was for a reason, and I needed it. So everything Satan does is to put you against God. The devil literally builds all around you with his false signs, so like all negative situations just go one by one, one by one, and he will even use believers to tell you something, and moreover, he will speak with you even through the preaching. And even he will talk to you through the Bible. Surely here and there you need to know this and that. Basically, the devil does everything for you to believe that God is against you and he doesn't love you. And then you're confused and already have internal conflict. How come? You came to God, he loved you, oh, I sense he's anointed now, and you had a great fellowship with him and you were full of joy, but all of a sudden, 
Maybe you're a believer for several years, like one year, or five years, or ten years, or twenty years. It doesn't matter. One thing that matters is the spiritual world doesn't change. But you start thinking, I feel like God's attitude has changed towards me. And you name the reasons for it, because somebody already gave you these negative thoughts on the plate. By the way, do you know that you can have a victory over the devil? The devil is a liar, and he comes and brings the feeling of guilt into your life. And when you have a feeling of guilt, you're getting exhausted. Guilt is like a statement that makes you far away from God. When Adam committed the sin with Eve, they were feeling guilty, and that's why they were hiding from God. When you have guilt within, it hides you from God. It's reflected that you don't want to attend church in, in your cell group, and also you don't want to be in the ministry, and you don't want to meet your brothers and sisters. But why? Because you think guilt is written on your forehead. Guilt affects you so much that you feel like an outsider. Adam and Eve were hiding from God the same way like a man is hiding from God now. But also, he is hiding from brothers and sisters, he is hiding from those who walk in the presence of God, because he doesn't have interest in them anymore. And meditating in life, I see only one way out. First of all, you have to know the devil will attack you. Yes, it is. But how far he will go is for you to decide. Second of all, the key point is to stop committing a sin. Then the devil won't attack you with guilt. Stop committing sins. Just stop. Cut off the sin. Because the devil can enter your whole life through one sin and affect it with guilt. And you will feel guilty all the time. And you have to know that the sin of death is a sin. The sin of death is a sin. For example, did you have a bee sting? Did you see it when a bee or was, or for example, a bumblebee stings? So the sting stays there, and you, you need to pull it out. So imagine the picture. If the person is allergic, he will die from bee sting. The same is here. When the devil, like that bee or wasp or bumblebee, stings you with a sin, and you don't have immunity for the sin, so you die spiritually. And actually, the pain you have is the feeling of guilt. Here is this pain. I guess every one of you had a beastin. So this pain from beastin is actually the feeling of guilt, and it tears you up. It's emotional pain. Everyone has to know not to let the devil any place in your life. How can I do it? What exactly should I do? What do I do if he keeps coming back? What do I do if he already has victory over me? You have to know what to do. Resist him. Steadfast in faith. Grow in faith. Build your faith. To grow in faith is to abide in the Word. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Most of people don't understand. They think they just need to simply read the Bible, and that's it. No, it's not. You need to edify yourself in faith. The spirit of mind is supposed to be upon every preaching, and it's supposed to be in you. The Word of God in the original is Ram. It means re removing the veil or opening the veil. It's like you can finally see. You have to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And today we are meditating on life, and we have to know the truth. The devil is a slanderer and serpent, and he can be so close to you. 
It's also God's creation. But the devil can be around you and he can attack you. And especially he attacks those people that he is afraid of the most. Often you might be in these situations where you've been told the devil doesn't know the future, but he is always watching you. He sees how God speaks through spiritual people into your life, and he collects the experience and works with thousands of people, so he figures them one on one to three. And when he sees that the person is dangerous for him, he attacks him in a special way. And he puts his uh, false signs around you for you to believe. He traps you into sin. He uses your desires and your weaknesses and other things that are passed down by your generation and some things that you acquired in your life and also things that you're supposed to keep uh, the boundaries, but you didn't, and he uses it against you. He always comes there when the door is open. He crawls through like a serpent, and this is because this is the nature of any snake to crawl and to sneak. This is, this is the way he controls your life. You can even be a minister, and he will control everything in your life. You have to know faith grows when you live in the Word. The devil is a liar. He gives you his Word because he crawls through. How? He crawls through your thoughts. Battlefield is your mind. Meditating in life, I see that demons always work that way in people's lives. I also have experienced how the devil was always trying to impose his will, but never cross the boundaries, never. You have to know God is righteous, faithful and holy. He will always reveal himself. If you are already tired of waiting and you think this is the right time for God to reveal himself, yes, maybe you are right, but I was going through this many times. Look, I know one thing that God knows better when to reveal himself. He knows everything in advance. And the most difficult moments in our life are the most blessed one, actually. It's just a matter of victory. God says, he who overcomes shall inherit all. Don't give up. You already will see changes today, and your heart will be filled with joy. My friend, remember, I'm with you. If you don't have faith, remember, I have it. Everything I say, it will always become strong. I bless you. I'm very glad and sincerely grateful for supporting my hands in my ministry with your donations. Thank you. May God bless you thousands of times. Praying for you, Vladimir Muntian. Dear partners, thanks to your support, the gospel is being spread all over the world. Beloved partners, we would like to thank you for allowing this broadcast to come out. Your support allows the anointing to move in all nations.
Money can promote healing. For example, the person may be wondering, should I give or not? Let God speak to me. Those are answers we often get from people like business ministers. They will say, I want God to speak to me and personally tell me to donate. Then I might actually do it. And you know, this position is wrong. It is wrong. Because the truth is that God won't chase you every month to tell you that you are supposed to give, to be faithful, to sacrifice. This is not going to happen. And you need to remember it. There is a partner, and partnership is a ministry. That's right, it's a specific ministry, and this is the calling that every believer has. It's just like a prayer, or reading the Bible, or testifying about Jesus. Every individual is supposed to be a partner. No exceptions. Let's give God glory for partners. The truth is that there are special ministers, certain individuals separated for this kind of service. Those are business ministers. Business ministers have a different approach. A different way. A business minister is not someone who just donates partnership money. For him, it's a full-time ministry. Let us say he has his own business, but he has made a pledge to separate a portion from his business for the work of God. It can be 30 or 40, 50 percent. We had a few individuals who sacrificed 90 percent of their business. So what happens? He has made a covenant with God, and he declares that the business he is involved in is not only his, but God's too. And if God wants to give someone money for a certain project, now let me ask you a question. Is our God a strategist or not? Of course, he is extremely wise. Let's say amen to that. Of course, how is he going to give money? Who will he use as the source? If a person doesn't have a covenant or previous agreement with God, how is God going to bless someone through him. When big money comes, listen, the person will obey his own emotions. If he feels like it, if he likes something, if he's touched by something, then he will say, okay, I will give money towards this project. But look, God cannot depend on anybody's emotional state. Do you agree with me? But if you have a covenant with God, if you have set a certain portion that you have committed to giving away, it no longer belongs to you. It's God's alone. I'm talking to business ministers here. Perhaps some of you are watching us. God may be calling you to become a business minister now. Now look, Jesus is the head. And we are what? The body. Jesus wants to give economic blood to the body. He wants to provide finances for special projects. Let us say we want to purchase a building in New York City. Let's use that example. Okay. How is God going to do it? If a person has a covenant with God, Number one, God sees that his portion is already there, and it is the amount the person has committed to giving, and he is doing it. So God will multiply guys' business to cover the need. Do you see any logic here? Do you understand what I'm talking about? You see? I have been working with businessmen for about 17 years. And I have seen people donate money. 
But when they start making more, you won't believe me, they start donating much less. Much less. And they will come up with all kinds of excuses, because this is what human nature is like, and we can all fall victims of it. But we need to protect ourselves. So the covenants I made before God are a shield to me. I promised God that I would burn for the salvation of human souls. Here is what I told him. There won't be a minute in my life when I won't be on fire. This is a promise, regardless of the state I am in. That is why there is never a moment in my life when I am not on fire for God and for the salvation of people. It doesn't matter what state I am in, even when I feel bad, even if I am in a lot of pain, even at the toughest moments of my life. I'm still on the fire for God. I made certain promises before God. My friends, I promised him to remain a down-to-earth person in every situation. Thank you. And you know, no matter how high God brings me, I know that I'm just a normal guy. That's it. I'm an ordinary guy. This is something I know for sure. You know, I even cringe when people use the word mister to address me. It's all because I know what I promised God. And you know, I have made some financial promises to God. So all I need is a hint from God. Whenever I see a need, I'm going to respond right away. And I always do it, all the time. I can look every person in the eye and say that I don't have any savings. I mean it. I don't have any savings. The very idea that I have some money in my bank account that can be used to save someone's life is unbearable. Let us say there is a mother of five, and she has come to one of our crusades, and this crusade would never have happened if it hadn't been for that money. So what happens? The woman gets healed. She receives a new life. Her kids are happy. Is anyone going to say amen to that? And do you know how many thousands of those people already got healed? And it all happened because of our partners and because of our business ministers. Dear partners, thank you for your faithfulness. Many people experience the power of God because of you today. Vladimir Muntan's ministry is the ministry that brings new free life and also gives the opportunity to be happy and a healthy person. She would be dead and buried. But she is alive and she has a new life. Make your own decision. Are children and orphans going to cry? or rejoice and thank God. The lives and destinies of people are in your hands. Make your own decision. One day, I came to a woman's house. When I entered the house, I was escorted to a room where someone lay on the table. The person couldn't move, and he had been paralyzed for a year already. He had awful bad sores. He couldn't speak. He had no hair. It was a woman. She was completely bald. I didn't know what to do, because when I came, I felt the spirit of death in that room. I saw that there were some funeral stuff in that room, ready to be used. The woman was supposed to die in a few days. 
I didn't know how powerful the gospel was. I had only been a pastor for a short period of time, maybe just a few days or weeks, no more. I began to talk to the woman. I testified her about myself. I didn't know if she could hear me or not. I prayed for her and left, promising that I would come back. I knew that they were going to bury her. But I came back some days later and I saw a miracle. The woman felt better and she was beginning to speak. Before that, she couldn't eat on her own and it had to be spoon-fed. But when I came, I saw hope in her eyes. I only asked her one question. Did you hear what I was telling you that day? She answered that she heard everything I was telling her. And she added, those words have raised me and given me hope. So I took that miserable woman, the one with awful bad stories, with no hair, the person who needed medical care. I took her to Paris shopping with me. Then we prayed for her and took care of her. And during one of our night prayers, she got up and began to walk. She got a new hair. I would like to tell every partner today, you must know that the gospel of Jesus is the power to salvation for everyone who believes. And today, the devil tries to stop the inflow of money, inflow of money for the gospel. He does his best to stop it by attacking partners, by telling them lies, by putting them into crisis. Listen, make preaching the gospel your priority. We will all stand before God. So we need to keep the devil from blocking the gospel so that everybody can get saved like that woman. We don't want people to die and be buried. But she stayed alive and got a new life. Listen, let me tell you, I saw many people who were almost dead, but thanks to partners and their financial help, the gospel was preached to them, and they were touched by the Holy Spirit. You must know your money is connected with a touch from God. The decision is yours. It's up to you whether a touch from God will reach someone or not. It's up to you to decide whether the person will live or die. It's up to you, my friend, whether the person will be healed or be sick, whether he will die or stay sick for the rest of his life. You can make a decision whether the children and orphans will cry or rejoice and thank God. It's up to you to decide whether a person will go to heaven or hell. The decision is yours as a partner. You can determine people's destinies. You decide whether they will live or die. Be happy or be heartbroken, you can decide whether the child will rejoice and live or the mother will stand by his grave and cry. You are a partner, so the decision is yours. If you're not a partner, you're called to be a partner to support 
Jesus to support his people. Your finances are translated into salvation and healing. Don't stand aside. Become a partner of the Holy Spirit. I tell you my preaching is not in words. I pray and the Holy Spirit moves. It's up to you to decide if people will be saved or not. The lives of other people are in your hands. May God help you. Amen. Summit is something that changes a person's life. God, He wants to change your life, but He cannot do it if you don't want it. You shape yourself. Remember it. God won't force you to shape yourself. Therefore, you choose how to live. You choose your destiny. You choose your path. God hand it over to your hands. Don't expect this from God. Don't put your responsibility on God. If you want your desire to come alive, start using counter-arguments against the idea that miracles don't ever happen. I want you to write it down. If you want your desire to come alive, you need to use counter-arguments against the idea that miracles don't ever happen. You may be sitting somewhere in this hall, or you may be watching us, and you have already lost your desire, for you have come to grips with the fact that nothing is ever going to happen. No, this situation can change. You have sort of agreed with it and given up. How can you come out of that situation? Start challenging the idea. This thing is impossible. No, I'm going to challenge that truth. I will challenge the idea that miracles are impossible. Now, what practical steps do we need to take? The first thing you do is ask questions. Do you know what I always did? I had quite a few situations where it seemed to me that the positive outcome was impossible. So I would ask myself a question, and why on earth not? Why can it happen? And I would start challenging myself with questions. And when I did that, I sort of shook the foundation of that feeling that was deeply rooted inside of me. Here is a question to ask, and who said that those things could not happen? So you start asking questions. Our own conclusions, now pay attention, all of you, happen to be quick and powerful. We are not talking of something dead here. All of our conclusions are quick and powerful. And they are like watchmen that keep you under control. They also have a voice. By the way, it's a very loud voice. But you only start hearing that voice when you let yourself go beyond the boundaries that control you. Let us say there are some conclusions that are in your unconsciousness already. You're not even aware of their presence. 
But as soon as you decide to change something in your life, those conclusions will suddenly come back to life. They will start talking to you. They will literally begin to shout in your ears. Miracles are impossible. I went through the same experience many times. I remember my first ice palace. Just imagine the situation. I choose to strive for the impossible, and this is something I always teach you. Just imagine. We are a church. And we are talking of something that no one has ever done before. By the way, this is something that always shakes your faith. Is that right? No church has ever done it. There were some visiting ministers like Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Myers, that's right, but no pastor has ever tried to rent the ice palace. But all of a sudden, I had that idea. Why not? So I rented the ice palace. Just imagine it. It's like the palace of sports here in Kiev. And we didn't have that many church members at that time. Just about a thousand people. That was it. Nobody knew me. I mean it, no one. Today everything is different. Everybody knows us. Are you aware of that? Everybody knows the Spiritual Regeneration Center of Vladimir Muntian. People know who I am, but back then nobody knew us. Absolutely no one. Look, we didn't have a TV channel back then. We were not using the internet. I'm not even sure it already existed back then. To make the long story short, there was absolutely no advertising available. The only thing we had were a few posters that we had printed out and distributed around the city. Now think of what the devil told me. He started putting pressure upon me with all the power he had. And all of a sudden, the ideas I had on the inside came to life. Who on earth are you? Really, who are you? I'm telling you everything that happened. I'll never forget those thoughts. You mean you want to rent the ice palace? So Joyce Myers rented it. But she's a world-famous minister. And who the hell are you? Kenneth Copeland. You know, it looks as though those demons know all those names. But who are you? I remember that I didn't have any answer. All I would say was, I believe. And I would say, I'm going to rent the ice palace and it will be filled with people i believed it i kept believing i stood in faith yes i stood in faith and you know what the whole thing seemed impossible because it's really impossible and then the day of our service in the ice palace came just imagine the state i was in i was really stressed out a minute, where were all those people going to come from? How could they even come? Even if 2,000 people came, it would mean defeat to me. You see, I had sold my faith, and I believed that the ice palace would be jam-packed. Because if you strive for the impossible, and then the hall is only half full, it means that you have lost. Is that right? So you're in the state because you have strived for the impossible. And all those old ideas and conclusions rose up in me, and the devils rose up too. But here's the gist of everything. Just imagine. Here I'm coming into the hall, and this is the picture I see. The ice palace is filled with people, and all those visitors were unbelievers. Dear partners, thank you for your faithfulness. Many people experience the power of God because of you today. Vladimir Muntan's ministry is the ministry that brings new free life and also gives the opportunity to be happy and a healthy person. Dear partners, thanks to your support, the gospel is being spread all over the world. Beloved partners, we would like to thank you for allowing this broadcast to come out. Your support allows the anointing to move in all nations. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is here today. And the anointing is coming upon you. And the first thing it does, it destroys curses over your life. Amen. It destroys all the bad things that held you captive, that bound you in chains. There is not a cell today. There is not a prison. 
There is not a lock that the Holy Spirit can open. He is God. He is the Creator. He is the Almighty God. And when He comes, dreams come true. When He comes, brazen doors get open. When He comes, the blind receive sight. When the Holy Spirit comes, every chain gets broken. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is here today to make sure you become the first one to experience complete deliverance, to become a free individual, that the river of the anointing wash over you and spread to other people, that the power of God move through you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And there is divine meaning to this college. The precious Holy Spirit wants to come into your life. So the anointing of God start moving in your life and through your life. Brothers and sisters, God is going to work with us. He's baptizing you with the Holy Spirit and power. He will take you to the wilderness. He will do His mighty work in you. And perhaps He will guide you through inner changes. But He will turn you into His minister, into a person who will be His partner, His friend, and His witness. Amen. Our God is great. Brothers and sisters, I would like to tell you that there is a problem, and it is something that our people and all the countries of the former Soviet Union suffer from. You know, when we speak of those doors, when we have in mind is that the devil shows up and tries to penetrate people's family trees, to keep them captive and to pass those diseases to other generations, those demons lived in the past. You need to know that the demons whom you see coming out of people here were already in existence 500 years ago, even a thousand years ago. They already existed. And they also lived inside our ancestors. You've got to know that every nation has its own history. And today, when we speak of generational curses, I want you to know that all the curses, those are the worst. Listen to me. Our ancestors were pagans. They openly worshipped demons. They were openly involved in magic. Today, the same curse is still operating here. Today, listen to me, when we see all those videos made against us and hear people say that we are doing something wrong, we are shocked because the same host broadcast shows like Battle of the Psychics. And those psychics are their friends. But there was one reason why it's going on. Listen to me. This world, the whole earth is still under the devil's control. So when those people see manifestations of the Holy Spirit, they just snap. But let me tell you this. I'm prophesying into the lives of people who are involved in those things. They are going to come here. And let me tell you, that they are going to broadcast our services on their channels. Because the curse over this earth will be destroyed. And those people had better stop bragging about devils and demons. They need to start boasting about the Church of Jesus Christ instead. The Church of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. He who boasts, let him boast in the Lord, not in demons or devils. And I would like to tell you, 
that God is going to change this earth because he is a great and almighty God, maker of heaven and earth. And he says, I'm God, I'm the Lord. Amen. The devil will be put to shame because Jesus exposed him on the cross. Even so, Jesus will put the devil to shame in Ukraine and all the other countries of the former Soviet Union. Amen. And when they come here, they won't bring their cameras alone. No, they will bring their problems alone. So the same Jesus they criticized would help them. Amen. Dear partners, thank you for your faithfulness. Many people experience the power of God because of you today. Vladimir Muntan's ministry is the ministry that brings new free life and also gives the opportunity to be happy and a healthy person. Dear partners, thanks to your support, the gospel is being spread all over the world. Beloved partners, we would like to thank you for allowing this broadcast to come out. Your support allows the anointing to move in all nations. You know, fortune telling is a common problem. Almost every individual either practices it himself or turns to fortune tellers at some point in his life. My friends, this is really evil. When a fortune teller tries to predict something, now listen to me, she's not really capable of making any predictions. The thing is that demons don't know the future. All they know are the things that are written about them in the Bible, that they will end up in hell. But a fortune teller doesn't predict anything. Instead, she orders things to come. So when the fortune teller uses words like long ride or big house, listen, those things will really happen, but not because the fortune teller predicted that. None of those things would have ever happened, but you came to that fortune teller and submitted yourself to her power, and by doing it, you led the demon the spirit who lives inside her take over. That is why everything the fortune teller says will come to pass because you accepted it. The very fact that you came to her and allowed her to speak into your life means that you committed some kind of a spiritual act. You can spell it out the following way. I accept everything you tell me and believe that it will manifest in my life. This is the reason fortune telling will inevitably end up in a demonic control in the person's life. That is why people around us are going through terrible ordeals, divorces, catastrophes, diseases, imprisonment, drugs, death. It's all because the devil has the right to prophesy. But who gave him that right? People did. There is no teaching about it. Did you hear me? Unbelievers just go to those fortune tellers and they have no idea that they are allowing the devil to speak and speak and speak. But do you know what the church does? It allows the Holy Spirit to speak and speak and speak. So today, our responsibility is to spread the gospel to every country of the former Soviet Union. Amen. And those people who say nasty things about us don't even understand that we speak good words, words of blessing. And those words are from God. Those are words of healing and deliverance that destroy everything the devil did. And after that, God's things come. Who will we allow to speak into our life? God, of course. Say, God, hallelujah. We will let him speak. And everything the devil said is going to be destroyed. Today you are a potential group leader. You need to know that when you return home and see a cell group movement in your life, you will need to do some important things. First of all, destroy all the words that the devil spoke into people's lives. 
Amen. We are not merely listening to this teaching for own sake, but we want this teaching to affect our ministry. Say amen. Next thing, believing in superstitions. You need to believe that superstitions are horrible too. When the person is superstitious, he believes in some omens and they come to pass. That's right, they believe because those things come to pass. But why is that the case? The thing is that there are demons behind every omen. So when a person believes in an omen, his heart is filled with fear. Fear is behind almost every omen. You won't have any luck. Something will go wrong. Something is not going to work and so on. Let us say the person has left his house, but then he realizes that he has forgotten something, so he has to come back. So the person believes that he needs to look at himself in the mirror, because if he doesn't, he will have bad luck. Or a person sees a cat cross the road. Perhaps the cat is not even quite black, but there is a fear anyway. That is why you'd better grab your belt. The meaning behind every omen is that if you do, a certain thing, something bad, is going to happen. People are superstitious on the inside. So they will say, no, I don't really believe in any of those things. But you know, just in case. You know, when people really suffer from this problem, they will never pass you any money at night. As for Christians, however, you can do it both at night and during the day. I'm talking primarily about accepting money. That will work even better. Amen. And it works for giving money away, too. I know how sacrificial you are. So listen, any superstitious person is controlled by some demons, even though he may not be aware of it. But sooner or later, the demons will affect the person's mind and his life situations. This is the reason I'm telling you those things. And I urge you to start teaching the same to your cell group members right away. They should never live in fear. They need to stop believing in omens. Instead, they need to start believing in blessings that God has bestowed upon them. Dear partners, thank you for your faithfulness. Many people experience the power of God because of you today. Vladimir Muntan's ministry is the ministry that brings new free life and also gives the opportunity to be happy and a healthy person. Awesome! Hallelujah! Yekaz City, are you with us? Glad to hear you. Glad to see you. Hello, hello. Christ is risen. Today is an incredible day. Easter is the celebration of life. And we want to con congratulate every one of you. Thank you, thank you. Uzbekistan, I know you with us. Hello, hello. For us, it's a really great holiday. We were waiting for this holiday very much. And we believe that every person is redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are rejoicing today together. Hooray! Hooray! And we have also Bransk City, Russia. Are you, are you with us? Oh, 
Christ is risen. He is truly risen. He is truly risen. This is a great this is the greatest holiday and congratulations to all of you. Two partners, thanks to your support, the gospel is being spread all over the world. Beloved partners, we would like to thank you for allowing this broadcast to come out. Your support allows the anointing to move in all nations. You know, fortune telling is a common problem. Almost every individual either practices it himself or turns to fortune tellers at some point in his life. My friends, this is really evil. When a fortune teller tries to predict something, now listen to me, she's not really capable of making any predictions. The thing is that demons don't know the future. All they know she are the things that are written buried. about them in the Bible, that they will end up in hell. Summit is something that changes a person. But, but a fortune teller doesn't predict alive. anything. Instead, God, she orders she things to come. But he cannot so do when the fortune teller uses words like "on children and, and orphans house, going to cry or rejoice and thank God," those things the lives and destinies really of people are not in your hands. Make your own decisions. None of those things would have ever happened, but you came to that fortune teller and submitted yourself to her power, and by doing it, you led the demon. The spirit who lives inside her take over. That is why everything the fortune teller says will come to pass because One you accept it. When you operate, to the very fact that you came to her and allowed her to speak when into I your life the house, means that you I committed some kind of a spiritual act. Lady. You can spell it out the following way. I accept everything you tell me and believe that you will manifest in my life. And he had been her reason for a year already. Will inevitably end up in a different situation. Every situation he faced, whether you look to the right or to the left, he couldn't speak. That is why he had no hair. It was a woman. She was around us. Are going through terrible ordeals. I didn't know what to do. Catastrophe. Because when I came, I felt the spirit of death in that room. It's all because the devil has the right to there were some funeral stuff in that room. People did. There is no way to be used. Did you hear me? The woman was supposed to die in a few days. And they have no idea. I didn't know that they are allowing the devil to speak and speak and speak. But I had only been a church for a short time. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak and speak and speak. No more. So today, our responsibility is to spread the gospel to every country of the former Soviet Union. Amen. I didn't know if you could hear me. Those people who say nasty things about us don't even understand that we speak good words, words of blessing, and those words are from God. Those are words of healing and deliverance. And I saw miracles that destroy everything the devil did. And after that, God felt better. And she was beginning to speak into her life. Before that, God she couldn't eat on her own. Say, God, hallelujah. Spoon fed. Music playing around but you when I came, speak. I saw hope in her eyes. And everything I only said is going to be destroyed. Today you, you are hear a what I was telling you that day? And while we are still alive, she answered, we will all you need to know that when you return home, home difficult. and she ate it, and see a cell group movement in your life, and you will need to do some important so I took that things. First of all, destroy all the words that the devil spoke into people's lives, with no hair. Amen. The person. We are not merely listening to this teaching for our own sake, but we want this teaching. We needed medical care. To effect our ministry. Say amen. I took her. Next thing. Believing in superstitions. You need to believe that superstitions are horrible too. When the person is superstitious, he believes in some omens. And began to walk. And she they got come a new to pass. Hair. 
Yes, that's right. They believe because those like things come to pass. But why is that the case? The thing is that there are demons the behind every omen. Jesus so the when a person believes in an omen, his heart believe. is filled with fear. Was not and going today, to fear is behind to almost to every omen. The influence you won't have any luck. of money, something will go wrong. If something is not going to money for the gospel and so on. Let us say the person has left his house, but then he realizes that he has forgotten something, so he has to come back. So the person believes that he needs to look at himself to the mirror, because if he doesn't, he will have bad luck. Or a person is a cat across the world. We will all stand before God. That is why you'd better grab it. So we need to keep the devil from walking the gospel. The meaning behind every omen is that so that everybody can get certain things like that woman. Something bad just imagine all the is going to happen. We don't happen. want people so to die. People are superstitious no, on the inside. And be buried. So they will say, but she no, I alive. don't really believe in any of those things. And got a new you know, life. Just in case. No one person. Listen, let me tell you. So you know, so many people when people really suffer who were from this dead, problem, they will never the pass you any money at night. And for Christians, however, you can do it both at night and during the day. I'm talking primarily about accepting by money. That Spirit. will work even better. You, you must know, your money is connected Amen. with a touch from God. The decision is yours. And it works to give money away too. From God I know how sacrificial you are. So listen, any superstitious person is you controlled to by some the person will live even though he may die. not be aware of it. It's up but to you, or later, my friend, the demons will whether the person the will be healed or be sick, his life whether sick, he, he will die or stay God sick for the this rest is the of reason his life. I'm telling you those you can things, make a decision and I urge whether you to start an orphan will cry to your or choice and thank God. Right away. They should it's never up to you to fear. decide they whether a person will go to heaven or hell. They need to start believing in blessings that God has bestowed upon them. I remember the first meeting. Thank you for your patience. Can determine people's Many destiny. people experience the power of God because of you today. Vladimir Montana, you decide whether they will the live that brings new free life or die, and also gives them opportunities to be happy and a healthy person. Be happy or be heartbroken. You can decide. But I didn't. Whether the child will rejoice and live, or the mother will stand by his grave and cry. You are a partner, so the decision is yours. If you're not a partner, you're called to be a partner. The first meeting was just the opening service to support many people came Jesus to support his people your finances are translated into salvation and healing we had over a thousand at our second meeting don't stand aside become a partner of the holy spirit i tell you my preaching is not in words i pray and the holy spirit moves it's up to you to decide if people will be saved or not the lives of other people are in your hands may god help you amen И мы сейчас Я прекрасно себя чувствую, да, слава а. Богу. Вот, мой диагноз, я полностью исцелена. Вы все видели а. ролик, что благодаря передаче, благодаря слову я исцелилась. А. Еще я хочу рассказать о исцелении своей дочки. Вот, ну где-то месяц назад, даже меньше, чем месяц назад, у моей дочки за ухом выступила такая шишка. И у нее очень сильно болело, и ухо болело, и голова начала болеть. Вот, она такая болезненная шишка была. Она пошла, я говорю, иди к хирургу. Она пошла к хирургу, вот, и хирург сказал, 
что это у нее киса, что надо удалять. Вот. И назначил ей время операции. Вот. Она ничего не сказала ни мне. Она говорит, что мама, мне будет, у меня будет операция. И все. И потом она, когда через время приходит к хирургу, когда назначена операция, хирург посмотрел и сказал, так она у вас высасывается, она у вас меньше. Она мне говорит, мам, я смотрела передачу «Время». Я выбрала Вау. специальную передачу про опухоли. Да. И она смотрела передачу. И у нее эта шишка полностью рассосалась. Хирург посмотрел, сказал чудо, что уже ничего, а этой кисты вообще нет. Wow, what a miracle. We are so happy for you, Valeria. Uh, Jesus is risen in your life for real. It's incredible miracle. Yes, that's true. God is uh, Almighty God, and He heals people, and I'm witness of it. I'm so thankful to Victoria for her uh, ministry. Thank God for everyone. Thank you so much, Valeria. Congratulations to you. Happy holiday. Hallelujah. Wow, we see such miracles in people's lives. It's so great. And, and we have many new people with us also. And uh, they also study with us in uh, School New Life. And one of them uh, we have here, her name is Galina. And she wants to share her story with us. Galina? Do you hear us? Hello, do you hear us? Yes. Congratu congratulations to all of you. Happy holiday. Uh, best wishes to you. Christ is risen. He's truly risen. Christ is risen. He's truly risen. Like you said, Pastor Tatiana, I'm Galina, and I'm from Belarus. And I find out about the fourth dimension in TikTok. And I, and I was watching uh, videos of Apostle Adimir and Victoria, how God uh, was healing people through them. And I just said to God, why not me? I want to be healed also. And uh, one girl called me, and, and that girl um, was from Gomel City, Belarus, and her name is Lina. She made a consultation with me, and uh, she told me about TV Crusade on March 19th and 20, and she, she encouraged me to watch that TV Crusade. I have many chronic diseases. I have hypertension. I have a, a spine problem. I have severe problem with my spine. I have a digestive problem. And from 2015, like uh, I started leaving hell. I had a first surgery. Uh, it was on uh, my female organs were removed. In a few months, again, I had another surgery in my female organs. And then I had a third surgery. And from 2015, I think it was some kind of a breakdown in my body. And I was I started suffering from insomnia. I thought I'm gonna go to crazy house because I was going crazy already. And, and doctors uh, doctor gave me the uh, sleeping pills because I couldn't sleep for four days, for four nights. I was just walking around up to 4 a.m. 
And I was asking Holy Spirit to touch me through the Apostle Adimir. I remember how I was standing and I was praying. It's something something was happening in my right leg and uh, some it was like uh, some kind of a wind was uh, blowing the air I can't even describe it uh, really and then time passed I noticed that I started to sleep better one night I was sleeping good then second night I was sleeping better and then the third night I was sleeping good and can you imagine because Holy Spirit really touched me and I have also another testimony I was I was watching also one of the TV crusades uh, Alina, my um, uh, counselor, she uh, sent me another links for TV crusades. I also had a hemorrhoids, and I couldn't walk even normally. Right now, I don't have really a, almost anything. It just all, uh, it's just, um, um, it just disappeared, you know, like I have just a little small uh, thing there, you know, and but it was really big, you know, uh, I was walk, I couldn't walk normally. And then there was another TV crusade. And I sat down watching TV Crusade, and Pastor Victoria started to pray, and some kind of a lump was going through, out of my body. Uh, I just started to cry, like, so much. Like, everything was, uh, I was, I started, like, uh, uh, crying so much. And I started to think about people, if they come and, uh, and look at me, I was just... When I went home, I, I still was shivering. And I went... And uh, then, in, in, some, in, in some time, I started to feel lightness. <laughs> And I started to feel so great that I'm so thankful to the Holy Spirit that He touched me through the prayer of Victoria. Listen to me one more. I will testify more later. Two, two weeks ago, I was, clean, I was uh, cleaning my apartment. I was doing errands around my house, kitchen, living room, and all my rooms. And uh, remember that I told you that I have uh, some spine con uh, like um, co construction in my um, in my uh, in my spine, you know. I. I you know, but I was doing so many things with uh, with my uh, and I was doing so many things around the apartment and all day long, you know, and my legs hurt me actually after this uh, day, but my spine didn't hurt me at all. I noticed that it feels like that I don't have this thing in my uh, spine anymore. And it's so much, and I'm itching, I have so much itching there, uh, at the place where I have this mm, metal construction. And I'm so thankful to Apostle Vladimir and, and Pastor Victoria for their ministry. And I just want to bow uh, to them for their ministry. Wow, how God, is, uh, how God is great in um, Galena's life, right? 
It's so amazing how people get get their healings right through the screen. I'm overwhelmed. I just I'm just speechless. I just want to scream to the whole world that what what God is doing in people's lives. Can you imagine she was sitting at work and the, she was watching this TV crusade on at work and God just touched her and healed her. It's amazing. There was no, she, she had a homeroids and now she doesn't have it. It's kind of funny, but it, it's not really funny. It's just serious. It's, uh, look, she was talking about like uh, that she, she would go to, she could go to even a crazy house because of her insomnia. And now look at her, how your, her life is changed completely. And uh, she is also our student at our school, New Life. Thank God. God, Pastor Ray, you know, you know, uh, God is doing uh, many miracles in other people's lives as well, not only Galina's. And, um, Let's take a look on the screen and watch the testimony of one woman and her child. What can be more terrifying than the disease of your child? And our Tatiana, she find out about the terrible disease that her son was diagnosed. Al epilepsy is the disease of, uh, of the brain. And usually the person has their um, um, epilepsy attacks, it's spontaneous attacks. And usually a person doesn't expect that he, he is going to have these attacks. And it can happen anywhere. And these attacks can be dangerous to life. Today we came to Chernovtsi city, Ukraine, to Tatiana's house, and, find, uh, and we would like to find out about her story. Hello, my, uh, my name is Tatiana. I'm Tanya too. Very nice to meet you. We've heard about your story. We came here to find out what miracle God did in your life. And Lexi, uh, Tatiana's son, was born uh, hel as, um, absolutely healthy. And I, was, I just went to the kitchen to, to cook soup, and then I just uh, went back to my child's room, and then I found my child on the floor. He was just breathing so... Um, quickly, I was shocked because he, uh, his head was, he was like uncontrollable, you know, he didn't, he didn't react on anything and I was, I was terrified. Tatiana called the ambulance and they took the boy to the um, hospital. This kind of epilepsy is a um, uh, generational uh, disease. And usually the person has this epilepsy attacks and after, after he had them, he doesn't uh, remember that he... Uh, so we, um, we came here to this playground and it was another it was a second um, 
epilepsy attack here with my child. You know, the most terrifying thing that you cannot help your child. It's very scary. He passed out, his skin was blue, and uh, he was like uncontrollable. I had a hope for pills, you know. And I was trying to see uh, to uh, collect those medicines to for my child because this was the this is was the only hope to get him healed uh, to get him cure. What the most um, scariest th uh, what the scariest thing for you? Um, I was afraid that this um, at, he could have a, this epilepsy attack right in the kindergarten, and I w I'm not going to be around. So Tatiana was um, fighting uh, for the life of her child for the whole year. He was taking appeals, but in uh, but in four months he got another uh, epilepsy attack. So his head was not functional at all during that uh, attack. In that um, tough, um, in that in that tough period of time, Tatiana uh, realized that she needs to uh, find the way uh, somewhere else. I was watching um, Regeneration Up. I find out about the Regeneration Center, and I started to watch Vladimir Montan's sermons, and I saw many testimonies there of people, how God was healing people there. That's what I liked about, and I was... I was um, I was amazed by that, and I realized this is uh, who will change my uh, child's life. And she was, Tatiana was watching TV Crusade, and uh, Apostle Vladimir was praying for healing today. Alexei was sleeping at that moment when Apostle Vladimir was praying. Let your anointing come right now. I dis I break the generational curse of disease. And I have this kind of desire in my heart to approach to my uh, child. And I put my hand on him. And at the same time, Apostle Vladimir had the word of knowledge. I pray right now for those people who have uh, who has epilepsy. And he said that the child is getting healed from epilepsy. Well, I see in the spirit that the a child is getting healed from epilepsy. The name of Jesus Christ, right now, it's a boy. Complete healing in the name of Jesus. From the, uh, from the presence of the Holy Spirit, I started to cry so much. I command you, the spirit of epilepsy, I command you, by the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I command you to go away. Leave. Leave the body right now. Get out. And I was standing close to my child, and I was crying because I, uh, I was realizing that my child is getting healed in that particular minute. <laughs> my child uh, got up in the morning and he was so happy he was jumping around after, after TV Crusade he didn't have any epilepsy attacks anymore I'm so happy more than 100% I'm so happy does he have any attacks? Daria Vasilevna, does he have any attacks? No, he doesn't. Everything is fine with this boy. You, could, you couldn't even say that he had an epilepsy back then. 
Right now, he, uh, during these two years, he doesn't have any epilepsy attacks, and he is absolutely a healthy boy. They got documents, uh, and it was officially proved uh, that uh, Tatiana's son is uh, absolutely healed. You know, when I, God healed my son, I just want to scream to everyone that God is living God, and just want to speak to everyone and say what God is doing and what he did in my life, in my child's life. Let me come to you. Don't be afraid. Good job. Good job. Good boy. I'm so uh, thankful to our church, Regener Regeneration Center. I'm so thankful for Apostle Redeemer's ministry, for his faith uh, to God, to people. I'm so grateful for his prayers. I'm so thankful to the, our channel. And uh, because many people can get their healings right through the screen, they can get uh, healing soul, uh, soul healings, physical healings, and we have many testimonies of healings, and one of them is Tatiana's testimony. So thank to God that God um, healed my child from epilepsy, and he is healthy now. All glory to God. And I see how he is happy, he is glad. I'm so thankful to the church, uh, World Revival Mission, and I see how God is changing many people's lives there. And I'm so thankful for healing of my child. You know, for uh, it was really impossible, but God made it real. That's incredible. We were looking at Tatiana right now and her son. And we see uh, they got a new life because it was terrible uh, diagnos diagnosis. Uh, and uh, right now they're happy. And we have Tatiana uh, with us right now online. Would you please share your feelings? How's your son right now? Because it's already five years past. How is your son feeling now? Hello, dear church. My son is healthy now, and everything is fine. He, uh, he is full of energy. <laughs> he just uh, too much energy. Sometimes we don't know. Uh, he doesn't know where to spend this energy, you know. He was taking pills back then, and he was gaining weight even from them. It was terrible. Uh, he was eating uncontrollably because of those pills, you know. It was terrible. And I'm so thankful for all the healing. We are so happy now. He is full of joy and happiness. All glory to God. Amen, amen. Let's give God glory. This is incredible. This is wonderful. Wow. This is happiness when you have all your children healthy. And what parents need? Only um, health, uh, healthy children, you know, and that they're going to be happy. We, will, we also want to present one of our students of news, uh, of School New Life. And um, Sabina, would you please share how your life changed when you started to study at School New Life? Good evening. Congratulations, Hyper Holiday, Crisis Reason. He's really reason. Wish you all the best. Wish you all the best. I'm from Belarus, I'm Sabina. 
My sister registered uh, me um, to School New Life on April 17. She told me she told me about her sickness, how she uh, goes from one hospital to another. And she, uh, by, accident, uh, by accident, actually, all of a sudden, she, f uh, she found some video on TikTok about the school. And then she registered me also to this school. And I was on one of the prayers of Apostle Lady Mary Victoria. And, um, and she's she started to pray for healing. I had a severe headaches. I was suffering from headaches so much, even uh, uh, I always call the ambulance for that also. And I was getting worse and worse, actually. I had a severe headaches attacks. It was unbearable. And when, when there was a prayer, I got healing from God. I'm so thankful to Jesus that the Holy Spirit touched me. Uh, during the prayer, I, f I felt like um, heat um, going through my body, especially in my head. And then... It was like a heat all over my body. And then on April 13, at, like at night, um, I got... I got, for some reason, I got so much fear. And I started to pray from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. And I was praying so much. And then I woke up in the morning. I always had a, uh, I always had a uh, conflicts with my mom. Right now, everything is fine. My husband says that um, I'm I'm changed so much. I got changed so much. Our atmosphere at our house got better. And I I told my husband that the, the Holy Spirit touched me, and I realized that the God. Um, 
God is a living God and he uh, and it's very important to believe in him and and I said to my husband it's so incredible when the Holy Spirit touches you I'm so thankful to Jesus for this feelings for this um, for the healing that I can really uh, thank God that I have this chance even like to um, experience this feeling from God. Thank you so much, Sabina. Look what's happening. Real miracles. People get real healings. People finally get good sleep and the the relationship in the family is restored. It's a happiness. It's a real happiness. Let's give God glory for a school new life. I thank Apostle Lady Mary and Victoria for their prayers. Let's watch video about school new life right now. This is a grand opening of school new life where you will find out how to build your spiritual life and where you can get the answers on your urgent questions. The teachers of our school, Apostle Adimir and Victoria Muntian. This school is a new life and the first course of school is, is always um, incredible. God showed me that we need to uh, study and then we can teach all the nations. This is a real foundation for everyone, for every Christian, for every new person. This is a foundation for everyone. And it's going to be a prayer for um, healing. Where we have a living God, there are many miracles there imagine cancer last stage person was suffering for many years and now she, she is healed and it's going to be water baptism at the end of the course and a, uh, register for our new school and study in our school every friday at 6 p.m 646 980 646-980-6988. Beloved ones, this, uh, this is an incredible project. You have to be part of it. Don't miss um, don't miss the lessons. It's very easy to register. Go to our website and register there and be part of our school right now. You also can watch our videos there on different topics. You also can become a partner of World Revival Mission. And you also have opportunity to send your donations right there. We also, we also, you also can leave your prayer request on our website. And Apostle Edimer will pray for you. Let's give God glory for that. Right now. Right now, let's watch testimony. God made a miracle for that lady. Let's take a look on the screen. You wake up from severe pain and you cannot even get out from the bed just to take even a glass of water. 
you don't even know how to breathe with the whole heart and and doctors cannot help you it was a real pain it was a severe pain I couldn't even get out from bed she always saying that I, I didn't even have such a pain uh, when I was delivered uh, when I uh, when I delivered the baby you know it was a real uh, severe pain one day Lydia woke up with a severe pain in her spine and was getting worse and worse. She went to the doctor. I took ultrasound. She was complaining about her uh, about her spine. My kidneys uh, healthy, everything is fine the year. And my doctor told me, I think you have a problem in uh, maybe it's neurology. Doctors uh, diagnosed Lydia with a wrong, um, he, they gave her wrong report, medical report. And I was taking uh, medicines every day. And um, after that, I got an ulcer. But it was a terrible situation in Ukraine, and uh, Lydia had a surgery. But he, after the surgery, she was getting worse anyway. I couldn't understand uh, why she's not feeling uh, better. It was like there is no way out. I still had those symptoms, severe symptoms. It was really painful to see how she was suffering. And I said to her, it's going to be TV crusade. Let's pray. Let's uh, believe that God, uh, Holy Spirit will touch you there. I had only hope for God. I had a severe pain there. I, it was unbearable. I couldn't get out from my bed. Lydia has the only hope is um, in God, and uh, she uh, was watching TV Crusade, and she was watching many testimonies how God uh, was healing many, uh, God, uh, how God is um, healed many people. On March 19th, it was a TV Crusade, and. Uh, and I believe that God is my savior, God is my uh, um, uh, healer, and I was expecting that prayer. And it's real how God, uh, God is so real through our apostle Edimir. It's so amazing to see how God uh, heals people. Um, right through the screen and Lydia was talking about that she's ex she was waiting for God to heal her Apostle Rimer started to pray I was like a watchman waiting for my uh, miracle and then I've heard I've heard the word of knowledge from Apostle Edimir. I see a woman, an elderly woman, 
I see her spine is, she has a problem in her spine, and you're laying down, you're in bed, and right now you're healed, you're healed, and you have her like a grayish hair, but it's colored hair at the same time, like a, like a wave you hear. Um, Right now, you're healed, you're healed. Holy Spirit is healing you now. Holy Spirit is healing your spine now. And when I've heard about my healing, I got out from my bed and I started to do exercising that I couldn't do, that I, I was doing this kind of exercises when I was young. And I was doing those exercises and I didn't have any pain. And I started to glorify God. And I started to thank Him. I remember that the that that word of knowledge from Apostle Adimir, that that elderly woman has a healing, you know, from spine. And Lydia just jumped out, jumped off the bed, and started to do these exercises. I realized that was my healing. This is mine. This is mine. We were overwhelmed with joy. We were rejoicing because we uh, we had so much compassion for Lydia. We supported her all the way. I can't even describe my joy when I I figure I uh, find out about her healing. In next service, she came to uh, she came to the service and she went. She took a bus. She uh, came all the way down to our church, and uh, and it was uh, she couldn't do it before at all. Her daughter, Lydia's daughter couldn't believe that her mom is uh, got healed and when Lydia called her daughter to exp to tell about her healing Galina couldn't believe her uh, she just when she uh, saw her with her own eyes then he believed in in her healing and now she can come to my house, she can walk, because she couldn't walk at all, she couldn't even go to the bathroom. Right now she is getting better and better with every day, and she's so happy. And she, uh, Lydia doesn't even, I guess she doesn't even realize it, how she got her healing. She just can't even, like, um, like uh, understand uh, um, that she uh, she's healed. I'm so thankful to God. I'm so thankful to Apostle Adimir and Victoria. Thank you. Thanks to them, God heals us. God trusts uh, Apostle Vladimir, and God trusts people to Apostle Vladimir, and he has the answers for many people. And we see these testimonies, we see these healings, we see these stories. I'm so thankful to God for our church, and I just want to wish, every, I just want to wish everyone, just wait for your miracle. God will heal you. You will get your miracle, like I got mine. TV Crusades, the answer for many people around the world, hundreds of people, they got their healings right through the screen, through the prayer of Apostle Adimir and Victoria Muntian. You may you say uh, thanks to Apostle and Victoria, but I want I want to tell you who you have to thank for. 
thank our partners because they make this prayer they make the 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 they organize this TV crusades and thank God for that. Become a partner, be, become part of our partnership team and bring the healing to every house. God performs incredible miracles nowadays. You cannot even watch this video um, testimony without tears. God just changed Lydia's life amazingly, and we have Lydia online with us. Lydia, what are you feeling right now? Hello, dear mission. I'm so glad that I can testify again and say thanks to God and in the and I'm so thankful to God for my healing. And I'm so thankful to our spiritual parents, Apostle Arimer and Victoria Montian. I'm so thankful for their ministry. So we have real, uh, we have a way, uh, we have the way out because of their ministry. Thank God for them. I'm so thankful to everyone. And I'm so happy now. I'm, so, I'm healthy now, and I feel great. Glory to our God. Glory, glory to our God. Thank you, Lydia. Hallelujah. Big thanks to our mission. Thank you, dear Lydia. And right now, I want to present Apostle Vladimir now. God uses him so much for millions of people to get a heal. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is really risen. Glory to our God, dear friends. This is all only, this is only God that does these miracles, and I'm so thankful to Him. This is a real mercy from God when He touches people, when He heals people. But there is more. You will find out. You will find out something incredible today. I want to tell you something today. God prepared something more, something incredible. Because His love, because God reveals His love all the time. And I see many prayer requests here. Look how many people write us. And they really need God in their lives. And God really can make impossible to possible. And, and, um, and you think you, can, you think you cannot change your situation and it's really impossible but only God can make it real for you maybe you might have a question how Jesus was resurrected Many people don't know about it. Many people don't know details about it. Many people don't know the story about Jesus. Maybe uh, many people do, they don't know the story when he got uh, when he was on the cross. Jesus went to the cross. He took his sins and transgressions to the cross. He took our poverty to the cross. And Bible says about it. I just want to tell everyone, listen to me. When Jesus was on the cross, it was the moment when uh, he was paying the price for you. Bible says 
that we are we are redeemed with a big price. Множество мест Библии говорит нам четкое определение – искуплены. Это значит, мы кем-то были проданы. Мы были проданы So одному. when we are redeemed with a big price, that means we were sold. Because uh, we've been in slavery. We've been in devil's hands for a long time. I just want to tell everyone. Jesus Christ is the one who created earth and heaven. He was before then he, uh, he came to earth. Many people think that Jesus uh, Jesus uh, Jesus came to this world when he was born um, from Maria, but he was before before the world. And remember how Genesis says that um, first was the word. And, uh, in the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was with the earth. Uh, uh, um, so Jesus was right from the beginning. You need to know about it. John, it says in John, and let me read Colossians for you. And you will be amazed what Bible says about it. And you will understand many things right now. And you will find out what actually uh, happened with our God, Jesus Christ. Because he came to, uh, in order, uh, he came to redeem us. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 He has delivered us from the power of darkness and converted us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Holy Spirit gave us this opportunity to be born again. Many people just don't know that they were uh, they were just um, temples for demons and evil spirits. And you know, um, there, uh, there are many um, people they live under the curse, and I, I was also under the curse. You know, when I was born, I supposed to die right after my birth because I was sick and. Um, I um, I had a surgery. They made a surgery, and something was going on it with my head. The uh, then then I had our, uh, another surgery. Doctors uh, uh, told that if it's not gonna help him, so nothing uh, won't help that uh, that child. And when I was there with those uh, with all these uh, surgeries you know and uh, i was there for 3 months all this uh, i had all these surgeries in uh, uh, during 24 hours and after that every year i got into the hospital uh, frankly speaking when my father was coming to my house, he was always beating my mom. He was beating my mom until death. Last time she was in the hospital after that. And when he was beating her up, and it was, uh, it was 11 a.m., that morning, he actually always beating her up, like uh, according to the schedule somehow. 
and he started, it was 11 a.m. in the morning, and um, he was pulling uh, my mom with a hair, like, um, uh, around the apartment, and I saw that. I look at all, I look at all those things, and I, I was so... Mm, I was terrifying, and something entered into my body at that moment. I experienced that. After some short period of time, I passed out, and I started, and I, and I was watching some terrible pictures in my mind. My chest was squeezed, you know, it was like an attack. I had an attack. And then it was a second attack later, and then it was a third attack uh, when I was 15. My father and my uncle, they were beating her up like every day. I was always experiencing fear in my heart. And last time when he was beating my mom up, he, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he uh, she got the lip injury, you know, and she always had a scar after that year. And I was a child, I wanted to just protect my mom. I was like about eight years old, approximately. Yeah. And I said, uh, do uh, not touch my grandma. And I said, and I said to me, I will destroy you. And he started to destroy me. My childhood was terrible. I know what curse is about. I know what is generational curse. Because when you are... Um, when you experience that feeling that evil spirits live in you and it's terrible it's scary i just want to tell every one of you when we come to god when we come to resurrect jesus at this moment we become temple of the holy spirit Holy Spirit comes to you. Holy Spirit is a person. He is God, like the Heavenly Father and like Jesus. He is the person. Holy Spirit is a person with his own character, with his own wishes and desires. And when Holy Spirit touches you, he casts all these demons and evil spirits out. And instead of them, he fills you up. And he takes this place in your body in order God to live in you. And after that, all these incurable diseases Getting, uh, get, uh, then you get healed from all these incurable diseases. Then you get, uh, you just stop having problems in your life. Like I was dying also from disease, and uh, I was 20 years old. I was always in a hospital, in some um, uh, is, um, establishments, you know, for... Um, and I experienced all this, not because I was looking for it, but because I had a, I, I had a curse in my life. And then I was praying to God, and I was asking God that um, if I, uh, please God, heal me, and I will uh, serve you for the rest of my life, for all my life. And then God healed me, and he restored my family. You have to know that Jesus paid for your sins, for your diseases, and he, he paid full price for you in order you to have a good life today. God will give you more than healing, more than deliverance. And I will tell you what, Jesus, when he wa Jesus was on the cross, you know what happened at that moment? 
цена. It was a price. For salvation of your soul. It was a, it was a price for salvation of my soul. When Jesus, Jesus cried out, Lord, oh Lord, why you left me? You know, when it happened, people just don't understand. You know, you know, Heavenly Father is supposed to turn his back on his son in order to have us. It was the, the most difficult moment for the Heavenly Father. And when, she, and when Jesus said, it's finished, in uh, uh, other words, in it's... Uh, it says um, katalasa in Greek. This word um, it's, um, it's from the it's, uh, uh, market terminology. Uh, it's, it means sold. And Jesus' body was in um, uh, grave. Jesus went to the uh, went to hell, and he was preaching. He was preaching there, though to those people who were waiting for uh, him for thousands of years. And he came there as a redeemer, as a uh, deliverer. And then Jesus was risen with the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians, the, the Holy Spirit, that the one who resurrected Jesus Christ, he lives in you. Just imagine it. It's... So Jesus was uh, on earth for 40 days after his resurrection. What kind of body he had? His body was changed. When Jesus, when Jesus resurrected Lazarus, Lazarus had the same body like you and me. But when Jesus was resurrected, Jesus was in a uh, like glorified body. He was in an eternal body. And Bible says that Jesus was the uh, Jesus is the last Adam. Jesus was the one who will never die. And they were trying, they, they were trying to feel, uh, to touch his hands because they were like, uh, and uh, you know where is Jesus today? He is right close to the heavenly Father. Uh, many people just don't understand. Uh, uh, what is on heaven? How to be on heaven like? What is on heaven? It means it's a spiritual place. Heaven? It's not just only a spiritual place, it's also a physical place. Because Bible says this, this is the place where the uh, their, uh, where the golden roads are. Elia was a prophet, was also resurrected, and he is there now. He was a, uh, I'm sorry, Ilya was um, ascended to have and not resurrected. So basically, Bible says also to us that there are not only just one place where God lives, it's like many, uh, uh, like a 
there are some places where, um, where Jesus lives. And many people were um, risen um, from the grave, you know, all those saint, saint people. And they went to the, uh, to the, uh, to the um, God's town. What is God's town? This is the town of God. When we say Christ is risen, he's truly risen, what is it about? He is risen because he, he is the firstborn and we are also will be risen. What is the purpose of all Christianity? Because we all will be risen. Поэтому Писание говорит, я думаю, вам будет интересно, если я зачитаю из Библии. Правда? Я хочу вам зачитать. Let me read it something. Фессалоникийцам. И прочитаем. Thessalonians. Павел говорит в 4 главе 13 стихом. Не хочу, не хочу, не хочу же оставить вас, братья, в неведении об умерших, дабы вы не скорбели. То есть, когда ваши близкие, они ушли из этой жизни. Павел видел, что люди скорбят. Но когда умирает человек, который верил в Иисуса, послушайте, что происходит. Он говорит, что дабы вы не скорбели, как прочие, не имеющие надежды. Если Let's choose sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. So that means Jesus will come again to the uh, earth. И говорится, что мы не опередим умерших. Предупредим, значит, опередим. умерших Потому что при возвещении, при гласе Архангела, Verse, verse 16 again, for the, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of our angel, and with the trumpet of God. So we all, all Christians, we will see the uh, resurrection of sane people. Like my, like my mom, she left, the, she left this earth and she went to heaven and it will be the moment when I will see her in the body that Jesus had of the resurrection. So, um, and uh, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. In other words, we will ascend. We will rise. So we will be moved to heaven. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Incredible words. And we keep talking about our Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's see what's said to us. 
Неужели он Let's там, look а мы at здесь? John. И вот Иисус в 14 Let's... главе Иоанна, он говорит такие слова. Давайте прочитаем. Он говорит, 15 стих, «Если любите меня, соблюдите мои заповеди». If you love me, follow my rules. другого утешителя. Иисус считал себя утешителем. And God will give you... Я умолю Отца и даст вам другого утешителя. The Comforter. Такие невероятные слова. And I will да ask the Father to give you um, another Comforter. And He will uh, stay with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, the one who, uh, that the world cannot accept it because they don't know Him, but you know Him and because He will remain in you. Вами пребывает. То есть он может быть рядом. So he will remain in you. Но потом он говорит, он будет внутри вас. Вы станете храмом. Многие люди могут видеть чудеса. Многие сегодня слушают, и они слышат so Many people will uh, can see miracles and they experience his miracles in their lives, and we and we listen to these testimonies. Домом Бога, храмом Бога. And when the Holy Spirit um, Li uh, start to live in you, you will become a temple of the Holy Spirit, and He is here on earth. I won't leave you, and I will come to you. Понимаем, что Дух Святой сейчас на земле. And we understand that the whole, when we realize that the Holy Spirit is on earth, you know what's happening? The Holy Spirit is on this earth. Чтобы каждого человека привести к Иисусу. In order to bring every person, in order to bring every person to Jesus, He wants to introduce every person to Jesus. Only Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm talking very seriously now. Only the Holy Spirit can give you the knowledge about Jesus. The knowledge when you get to know, uh, the, uh, get to know Jesus personally. What is it about when you start to have fear before God, when you have this um, reverence before God? Дух Святой приводит нас к Иисусу. Именно Дух Святой дает нам покаяние. Дух Святой дает нам познакомиться с Иисусом. Дух Святой дает нам Это называется, знаете что? Реальная, действующая благодать. Благодать, друзья. This is, um, and this is a grace, what I'm talking about. You know, you know, we all deserve death. Many people, they just, don't, they just don't know what death is about. Death is not just when the person just died. Death is about, uh, death is uh, the separation. When the person is dead, so um, spirit, spirit and body, they just separated. But there is another death also. When the person separated with God forever, that means it, he goes to hell forever. Hell was not prepared for uh, people. He was, he was prepared for uh, demons and evil spirits. But when, but when Adam uh, denied the truth, that's what happened. You need to believe in Jesus like in your Savior for the eternal life. Because uh, Jesus gives you not only healing, he gives you eternity. 
He wants to uh, find out about eternity today. He wants you to uh, he wants you to understand today that you will be resurrected. You didn't come to this earth from parents. You did, you, you did come here from God. It was the God's plan. He, God already chose you. God already predicted you. He already knows you. That's why you call today by Him. That's why you have to know. That's the only way today to break the Satan's work upon your life. Remember this. You have to hear me out now. This is the only way to break all the works of the Satan. If you don't believe in his uh, resurrection, that's actually can break. Uh, that's actually uh, leave you under dem uh, demonic uh, um, influence. But if you believe in uh, Christ, in his resurrection, it will break знаете, all the Satan work upon uh, in your life. You have to listen to me today. You have to hear me out today. Because of your faith, you can please God. When you believe in Jesus, you touch the heart of God. When you believe in Jesus' sacrifice, you touch the heart of God. Because the uh, heart of God, the Heavenly Father, was, uh, was made apart because of He gave His own Son to the suffering. And it's uh, Bible says that he uh, Jesus was humiliated by um, Herod. He, they were beating him up. You know, his soul was a uh, tear apart. Can you imagine? How the heavenly Father was suffering. He, he loved his son so much. I had a problem with my physical father. I had a problem for many years because the word of, the word of father was a bad word for me. Because my father, he was an awful man for me. My Victoria, she will be praying for you actually today. Can you imagine my victorious father? He never wanted to see her. He knew that she was born. And she, he lived in one city with her. But she never seen him. And, and he never wanted to see her. That's why when we came, we came to our Heavenly Father, we didn't understand the... Um, we couldn't believe uh, because we had a bad experience with the fathers, you know. You know, my mom, she loved me so much that she dedicated her life to me. From, from, from the childhood, I saw her care and kindness. And she, she dedicated her life to me. She made impossible things for me. She went through for uh, she went uh, she went through. Um, she went for everything. That in order uh, that I will be happy. You know. Um, I was. Um, 
18 when we uh, we actually uh, were married with Victoria and there I was I was living an awful life and I bought uh, drugs and I brought them home and those drugs were there they were there uh, um, on the terrace and then I went and then I went somewhere for uh, and police uh, came to my house and they discovered these drugs in my house and they, and they told my mom that that, uh, that uh, your son will be arrested right now. And my mom, she loved me so much, she said that uh, this is her drugs. And policemen, they, uh, they knew that she was lying. And then Victoria came to police department and he, uh, she said that uh, this is not uh, his mom's drugs. This is, uh, this is my drugs. He loved me so much. My mom loved me so much. Victor, Victoria also went for everything for me. When I, when I was a uh, believer for a long time, and God touched me. It was uh, not a few years ago. And he God told me that uh, God told me that this is the love that I put in my mother's heart. That this is the same love that I um, I have for you. But it's only just one drop of this love. And then I remember how I experienced the mother's love from God. I realized that he loves me. I realized this. He loves me the same how, how my mom loved me, but it's just millions times more than that. More than my mom loved me. And you might have the same problem that the Heavenly Father is some kind of a punisher and he wants to punish you with a disease or he wants to find the mistakes to punish you for, but it's not true. He loves you. He gave his only son. Does Jesus love you? Jesus. Somebody here, uh, somebody is hearing me, uh, listening to me now. Jesus said, "This is my drug. This is my sins. This is my fault." And he has to pay for it. And he has to go to prison. He has to go to the cross. He has to be beaten for you, for your fault, for your guilt. He has to be humiliated for you. And he did it. That's why the Bible says, look, look what happened when Jesus was risen and he went to heaven. Look. Look what Bible says. Look what the Bible says. So he was risen in, he went to the to heaven. Ибо мы имеем не такого первосвященника, который не может сострадать нам в немощах наших, но подобно нам, но который подобно нам искушен во всем, кроме греха. И вот здесь самое главное. Здесь говорится, что Иисус понимает тебя. 
Bible says that he, uh, Jesus understands you. He understands you totally. And, he, and today, when you believe in him, he, you, will you will get the complete healing today. Because he paid for your sins, for your diseases. He took your disease. And when you believe in him, the faith in Jesus Christ release healing in, into your life. You need, you need that your disease uh, will be healed today, that your depression will be, um, will be finished today, that you, that you will finish with the surgeries in your life. You need to come to the throne of God. You need to come to the throne of God with boldness. Boldness is more than bravery. You need to come to the throne of God with zeal. Иисуса Христа. О, Господи! О, Боже мой! My Когда Lord. ты об этом думаешь, When то, you знаете, think about друзья, it, уповайте, when вам, you rely on God благодать. totally, и вот вы должны понять, что Отец на небе, Он любит тебя так сильно, you need to know that the um, Heavenly Father is on earth and His heart was broken for you. Я все время говорю эти слова из Библии, потому что они очень-очень важны. Я хочу вам прочитать их. Я хочу, чтобы эту проповедь вы слушали ее десятки раз, и чтобы она I want you this sermon to listen to many times. I want this sermon be message for you, especially for you personally, for you. Because Easter is the resurrection of Jesus. Because you need to listen to me now. Because this is deliverance in your life. Oh, Боже, какие слова. Послушайте. 32 стих. Тот который Сына Своего не пощадил, но предал Его за всех нас. Как с Ним не дарует нам The one who didn't, uh, the one who gave His only Son for you. The one who gave His only Son for you. How come He doesn't, have, he doesn't give everything for you? He already paid big price for you. Of course, he will give you everything that you need. So that's why we need to come to the throne of God with boldness, based on God's word. You don't need any confirmation in God's word because this is a living uh, word and there is no doubt about this word and you have to make this word of God as a foundation in your life and then you come to the throne of God with boldness, with his, with his scriptures, with his words. And I come to you, and I, I and I come to you now, and I say to you that I am redeemed from uh, from sin and from uh, disease today. And He gave me new life, and He gave me eternal life. You know, when we um, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you have to know when we're gonna pray. You have to know, when you accept Jesus Christ, you, 
You've been given the, internal, the gift of internal life. And as soon as you give your life to Christ, your internal life starts now, right that minute when you, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We will never see, we will never see death. Because we, we live and we live with God internally. Because our bodies will be resurrected. We will be living with God uh, for, uh, internally. Today is the special moment. You might say uh, internal life is somewhere far. I need God now. I understand you. And God doesn't judge you for that, but you have to know. If he gave you internal life, so of course he will give you victory right here on this earth. And you will see wherever it was impossible for you, it will become possible. No matter who you are, maybe you're a politician, maybe you're a housewife, maybe you're homeless, no matter who you are, you're the human being, and in the eyes of God, you are, uh, you are very precious, like any president. You, you have a, a pre you're precious to God, because God gave his only son, and Jesus paid for, uh, for you. He saw you in your sufferings, and he paid for you, because God predicted, he al God predicted already um, for you um, um, a victory in your tough situation, and, and maybe you were not even Christian at that time when you were in those tough situations, and maybe you just, it was like a, you were just crying out to God for some reason, God help me, and you actually, and you, uh, you've seen the victory in those tough situations. Why, why we studied our school new life? Why people go there to study? For me, is a, uh, is a real gift from God. Because the purpose of my life is uh, the salvation of people. When people turn their hearts to Jesus, and when I see this um, God's project, uh, uh, which is the school new life, we learn um, about the uh, we learn how to believe in Jesus Christ there in order to see the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I say to you now, the Holy Spirit is a real person and he walks here on earth. And I want to tell you one secret. And we talked uh, to the Holy. Uh, we talked uh, to the Holy Spirit with Victoria, and we say, "Holy Spirit, you are our friend." And when I uh, was walking to the studio here, I was talking to him. I was talking to him. I was meditating with him. And he wants to touch you right now. He wants to heal you right now on this Easter service. He wants to take away all the curses. He wants to take this curse away. And you have to know that Christ is the when the curses are getting broken. The devil is afraid of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you today, God will touch you today. God will heal you of cancer. God will take away any divorce. God will break the curses upon your life. God will take away any conflicts in your relationship. I see a man in the spirit right now. You have ulcers all over your body. 
and you are getting healed now. God is uh, taking away all these ulcers, and you're suffering from this for a long time. You're healed now. Right now, I see another person who has uh, pr uh, problems with lungs, and you had a fluids in your lungs. And right now, at this moment, you are healed now. And I see you throw something. So, uh, uh, you are getting healed in the area of, your, of the throat. Holy Spirit shows me you have a cyst in your tooth. And right now, uh, right in your gum, and uh, you have complete healing. I didn't plan this. I see a person who has a problem in his eye, like behind your eye, and you have a complete healing there. And... Um, and uh, you have a problems with your um, nose and uh, some kind of a polyps you have there. I know Holy Spirit started working now already. And he removes all this. Prostate gland is uh, healed right now. In Life, complete healing now. All inflammational processes are uh, gone right now. You're healed. I'm talking to somebody, and here is a politician, man, and you're healed now. You, uh, your prostate gland is healed now. Right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The, uh, I see a woman. You have a, a cancer in your left breast. You're completely healed right now. Complete healing now there. You don't have a cancer there anymore. It's gone forever. God healed you now. God removes cancer right now. God removes metastasis now. God removes tumors right now. Completely. Cancer is going away completely. Cancer. Cancer is going away in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see a person who has a problems with the lip. And you're healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God showed me thyroid right now. And uh, he showed me that he healed that person. Your, your thyroid became normal, like you have a new thyroid. You don't have any, um, any uh, growth there anymore. And you have a heat going through your body now. And you have you have energy going to your body now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Right now, I see a healing power goes to the female organ. Uh, particularly to uterus and uh, and you're healed those women who, uh, and also cervix is healed those women who have a problems in female organs and those women who have problems with the breasts uh, put your hand over there and I'm praying for you now Holy Spirit touch 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 your anointing is moving now. Let your anointing break this curse of cancer in your life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You have to know you don't have a cancer 100%. This curse is broken. You have to know this curse is broken. I see a person after after a stroke, and you uh, you've been paralyzed. Just start to do what you couldn't do. 
start to move those um, uh, those parts of the body that where you had a uh, paralysis. Get up and walk. Get up and do what you couldn't do. Raise your hands. Talk. In the name of Jesus, you're healed. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. And I hear in the spirit the word of in, infarct, infarction. And you have a pre-infarction uh, condition. You already uh, had something going on in your body, in your heart. And you have complete healing right now. Your heart is healed completely. Right now, in the name of Jesus, your vessels are healed now. The movement of the Holy Spirit is moving to the to gallbladder. And you had a stones in your gallbladder, and, it, and it's healed there. Stomach is healed now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh my God. There are some people who, uh, who has to put their hands on eyes. It doesn't matter what kind of problem you had with your eyes. Holy Spirit is anointing your eyes right now. You have to know the anointing is the power with, uh, with uh, uh, which um, God created earth in heaven. You have to know that your eyes are just opened and uh, you start to see and um, your ears are healed right now. Be healed, be healed. Be healed. Examine yourself. Examine your eyes. Examine your ears right now. I see that there is a uh, person who have a, uh, who have a pause going uh, from ear and you're healed. Right now, Holy Spirit shows me a tailbone and uh, low back and you're healed there. You're healed there. I see some kind of a... Uh, your tail was broken or something. I see some cracks in your tailbone and your tailbone is healed now. I see between uh, spines. I see, uh, I see hernia between vertebrae and you have and there is anointing going through your spine there and you have a new vertebrae. You have new tissues there. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Asthma just left the child. Asthma just left the child in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I ask you, dear friends, I see um, Holy Spirit uh, is healing um, children now. Just please pray with me. Stretch your hand to, uh, just please, dear TV viewers, just uh, stretch your hand towards me right now. Until, until I say uh, that's enough, just please keep stretching your hand towards me. Holy Spirit, touch, touch, fill with your power, fill with your power. Let every child be healed now. Holy Spirit speaks to me now. Uh, I see a grandma, grandmother is laying down. You have to put your hand also on your grandma. And you will see how the healing power will come to her. Your grandmother has a problems with her um, with a bladder and kidney and heart. And 
положить свою руку на своего ребенка. As soon as I say, uh, you just put your hand on your child. Holy Spirit, touch. Feel with your power. We feel with your greatness, wonder working. Feel with your wonder working. Please perform your miracle right now. Hallelujah. Your anointing, just touch, touch, Holy Spirit, touch. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Right now, put your hand on your child. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will go through your child. I see a child who has a problems with bones some kind of pro, uh, some kind of uh, bad process going on in uh, child's bones and right now he has complete healing I see another child who doesn't have a part of his hair on on the head and you have complete healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Just keep, keep performing your miracles by your power, by your greatness. Hallelujah. Lord, just put your hand on, on the sixth spot. Let your anointing, let the anointing of, um, let the anointing go through the bodies now. Put your hand on the six part. Your healing anointing. Your anointing of wonder working. Let your anointing of wonder working go through the bodies. I come to the throne of God and I pray to you, Jesus. Just please have mercy on people. Just give, give, pour your faith into people's hearts. Let the incredible let incredible happen in people's lives right now. Let impossible happen in people's lives. Let the sick people be healed right now. I pray to you, I beg you, God, just I beg you, God, just please do impossible. I'm interceding. I'm interceding before you, God. I'm interceding for people. Just guide your guide the rivers of living water into people's hearts. Let the let every heart be explode with your faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. I sense like somebody has to renounce witchcraft right now. Uh, repeat up to me. I renounce witchcraft in the name of Jesus. I renounce devil. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce demons and evil spirits. I renounce fortune telling. I renounce horoscopes. I renounce all men's superstitions. Repeat, up, repeat up to me with the sincere heart. Let all these demons go away from your life. And right now, say it with me, Holy Spirit. Fill me right now with your power. And I say it with me right now. Heavenly, say it with me from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father, forgive me. Forgive me for all my sins from this moment now. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord Savior who died for my sin, who paid for this big price for me. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. I accept him as my healer, as my protector. I accept him as my Lord, my life. I accept him as my, as my Savior. It's the one who gave me eternal life. And say it with me now, Holy Spirit, I dedicate my body to you. From this day on, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is your temple, Holy Spirit. Live in me, Holy Spirit. I praise Jesus. I believe in Him like the one who's been 
on the cross for me. Hallelujah. The one who was resurrected for me. Anointing is here. Anointing is here. Anointing is here. Anointing is here. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 If you haven't been... If you haven't been at our school, New Life yet, you just just basic, you just simply didn't know about this school. You need to study at our new school, at our uh, school, New Life. Just say to God right now, from this day on, I want to know Jesus. I want to get to know Him. Just make a decision to register to school, New Life. Today is the Easter, and this is the day to register for school New Life. The name of this school is New Life. It's not just a label. It's, this is a purpose. This is a point. This is what's going to happen to you in that school. Because God creates these things for us now that you will uh, that you will be the student of that school now i'm praying for everybody now just have mercy on everyone just forgive people just many people need your forgiveness people just uh, just devil put people in a trap just people just they don't know they don't see the way out they just get lost so and I just want to tell you, God loves you. Just turn your eyes to Jesus. You cannot change anything by yourself with your strength. But God, God has a mercy on you. And he will guide you like a lost sheep. And he will, he will uh, direct you right now. Listen to me. Hear me out. Demons, leave people. Dear friends, when I'm praying, demons are always living the bodies. They always leave the bodies. Cancer always leave the bodies. Because when I command demons and evil spirits to go away, you don't have to have any doubt that you will be you are healed, that you have freedom now. Because God's word going into your heart right now, because the truth is setting you free now. Jesus is close to you now. He loves you. God knows about you everything. And believe me, be, uh, through the faith in Jesus, you will conquer everything. Wow, there is amazing anointing of the Holy Spirit here. And, and the power of the Holy Spirit is in your place now. He never forsake you. He will never leave you. Because you belong to Him. Hallelujah. Those people who gave uh, their lives to Christ, uh, call us, text us, uh, let us know about it. Let us know about your salvation and get registered for school. And uh, you become part of our school because we are internet church. God created this internet church for many millions of people on this earth. A few months ago, uh, last fall, I, I, was, uh, tell, I was prophesying that people uh, wouldn't, wouldn't get out from the houses. And right now, there are some events going on, and people cannot go from their houses, even on Easter, right? Yes. And uh, but but it's not about me. It's God who uses me and other people in our in our mission. Your lives, your new lives uh, will start today. 
Our service is uh, going on, and Victoria, my Victoria, will be praying, and demons and evil spirits will leave your bodies. When she prays, emotional wounds are getting healed because she's anointed by God for that. When I have her uh, tough times in my life, I always watch her sermons. And I was saved by her messages. And I know when she will be praying, you have to hear her out. It's very important. I just want you guys to uh, show your love to your uh, family members to the, to the friends you know, to friends you have, to people you know. Maybe you have this name in your heart right now, in your mind. Just share this link with people you know. Call them now. Text them now. Share this link uh, because today is the Easter. Today is a great opportunity for people to be healed by God. This is a special day. I'm so thankful to every one of you. I'm so thankful to our partners that uh, you, dear partners, make this uh, sir, uh, TV Crusades happen. I'm, I'm praying for partners right now. May God bless every partner. May God bless every partner. Bless every partner's house. Bless every uh, partner's children. Bless partner's souls. Let, let every partner be healed from any disease. Let, your, uh, let God's peace be in every partner's heart. Bless every partner. Let your presence be upon every partner. Protect every partner from any evil. Let your blessing be multiplied on every partner. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If, dear friends, if you're not a partner yet, I'm, I'm praying for those people who are making decisions to become a partner. Because when you become a partner, your life will be changed. And we have many testimonies like that. And you can support our, um, our projects, our TV Crusades, and, uh, well, and uh, we also have many, uh, we have TV Crusades translated into different languages. We, have, uh, we, we need your support, so become a partner. Just support the work of the Holy Spirit around the world. I want you to be these people. And I'm praying for those people who are making decisions to become a partner. Bless, bless these people. Let your mercy be upon every per person. Thank you, Lord. Bless everyone. Bless every person who who uh, who become the part of the school new life. I bless everyone who uh, will um, come on the uh, on the on the on the walk with God. You know, um, to get to know Jesus, it's uh, um, some work to do. It's a process. But God wants to bless your life, and you will see the changes in your life. I bless you all. And I want to uh, give my word. Uh, I, I want to... Um, I want, I'm about to leave now, and uh, we have uh, great people here, and it's so great to serve God together. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Victoria will be soon here, and will be a great time together. 
your friends, those ones who were, um, uh, received their healings, uh, please share your testimonies with us, and we want to read your uh, stories, testimonies right now here live. And I just want to say again, Christ is risen. He's truly risen. Christ is risen. He's truly risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to our God Almighty. May God bless you richly. And our, and our service is, is going on. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. It was incredible. Wow, awesome. It's so great to be in the presence of God because there is life in the presence of uh, the Holy Spirit. And it's real life in a, in a school, in our school. And we have such incredible TV crusades like uh, right now we have. Like uh, we have a life going on everywhere because Holy Spirit is life. It's always life. Let's give God glory. Dear friends, please share your testimonies. Let's give God, uh, let's glorify our God to the whole world. You can see the contact numbers on the screen. And just please share your story, what God, uh, uh, what God is doing in your life. And we are waiting for your stories now. And we see that uh, people started to write us. Look, uh, we have uh, uh, Tatiana from Brank City, Russia. Thank God for the touch of the Holy Spirit. I uh, I had my nose uh, healed. Another person is writing us, uh, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I felt like my soul was, uh, uh, my soul set free, uh, was setting free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you. Dear friends, keep writing us, and we're going to uh, read your testimonies. Maybe somebody online wants to testify. Apostle Vladimir was talking about partnership right now. And we have one person who wants to who wants to share her story about the partnership because he just became a partner recently. Are you with us, Tatiana? Tatiana, I knew uh, that you wanted to testify very badly. Uh, let me just read the testimony while Tatiana is uh, turning her microphone. I had a um, pain in my legs. And during the prayer, I, it was really hard to sit, uh, sit and down. And, uh, and right now, I don't have a pain, and I have, I have lightness in my body. Thank you, God. Glory to you. It's really God's glory. Thank you so much. God, you're almighty God, really. And Apostle Redeemer was talking about the partnership because there is a great power in partnership. I don't know how to even explain it. I just, I don't know uh, how to use the right words, but it's really the great power in partnership. Natalia wants to, Natalia wants to share her testimony. 
I know that you are uh, in Germany now. Would you please turn on your microphones? We want to hear you. Do you hear us, Pastor Tanya? Please share, Natalia. I want to share my testimony. What happened with me and school, new life. I, I, I didn't have a. I was always a faithful partner, but I didn't one few months. I didn't have opportunity to uh, donate. And uh, Apostle Vladimir was talking about uh, to, to donate 10% of your partnership uh, finances, and I realized that I need to even to donate even 20%. My daughter um, was, nine, uh, was 15 years old. When she left the house, she hated me so much. And when she finally back home, we couldn't even talk to each other normally. We always had conflicts. So last year, she uh, she finally started to uh, come to our house. And after summit, uh, I came home. Uh, and I came home for a few days. And we started to talk to my daughter, and she started to tell me the stories of what she experienced uh, all these years, and uh, it was really awful. And then, uh, and then uh, my daughter, she made a decision to change her life, and from that moment, her life is changed. And I realize what partnership is about. Uh, even, uh, I didn't even dream about it already that God could change anything in my daughter's lives, in our relationship. Right now, my daughter got married and she has a family. For me, is a great happiness. And it's so great to see how God changes uh, people's lives uh, through the partnership. And thank you, Natalia. Uh, and we see, uh, I've heard that, uh, that Tatiana already uh, ready to, to uh, share her testimony. Christ is risen. Um, he's truly risen. Hallelujah. I want to share my story. Before, before I became part of the mission, let me tell you a story. Uh, I was sick. I had one thing uh, sick. I had another thing sick. I had uh, problems with liver or other organs. It was a terrible life. I couldn't even study normally. And before New Year, I was about to die. I, I didn't have a hope even for doctors. I was just laying down there. If it just... And, um, and um, 
I was asking God to uh, heal me or just to take me away because I, I wanted to be with him. And um, I experienced the supernatural power from God. I started to walk. God gave me a job and my life started to change. And on March 26, I think God led me here. I clicked on one uh, link and, and uh, some men started to talk uh, and I started shivering. I started, uh, I heard some scream from my, uh, from me like, and um, I called one of your missionaries and that person uh, offered me a partnership. And next day, as soon as I made a decision to become partner, I um, I received some amount of money from nowhere, I would say. And I, be, uh, excuse me, she, she didn't become a partner, so she became a partner when she got her, um, she got the amount of money uh, from somewhere. And uh, I became a partner and uh, I became an absolutely healthy person. I became a whole person. I also want to testify about German TV crusade when Apostle Rimer was talking about girl. He said about the skinny girl. He said that she is so, uh, she's very sick. Something left my stomach at that moment, and something left my um, head. I, I felt lightness in my body like I was flying. I never felt anything like that. And when Victoria was praying, and he, she was praying about the spirit of rejection, my mom wanted to do abortion when she was um, pregnant with me, and uh, I got I got free from rejection uh, during the prayer of uh, Pastor Victoria. I think Apostle Edimer, I thank God for Apostle Edimer and Victoria Montian. I believed in God, but I didn't know the truth. Right now, right now, I hear the uh, truth from God, and it really nourishes me, and it changes my life. Thank God. Wow. Wow. Our students, our students of, uh, of school New Life, they just grow so fast spiritually. That's good. Yeah, the most important thing in their lives uh, get and change like rapidly. Please keep writing to our, keep calling to our hotline. And uh, Lika just wrote us. I experienced deliverance during the prayer. I was crying so much when um, I, I, I've heard about the love of the fa of the Heavenly Father. If, uh, Jane uh, is writing from uh, Crimea, Ukraine. I used to have a pain in my female organs, now I don't have it. And when Apostle Vladimir was praying, I started to breathe um, uh, normally, and right now I have more strength, and uh, I feel great. She keeps writing. And uh, I experienced the um, present, uh, experienced the anointing of the Holy Spirit so much. Thank you so much. 
Valerie um, wrote us her daughter became a partner and she had a headaches for four years and as soon as she as soon as she became a partner her headaches are gone and I know Val Valeria she was always uh, talking about her daughter, how she wants her to get rid of those headaches. My, uh, you know, when you have migraines, it's terrible pain, really. And it's real freedom for Valeria's daughter. I, I, had, I had lightness uh, from the prayer. I also received the... the uh, healing of my eyes. I believe that I uh, have a restoration of my sight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tatiana is writing us from Kazakhstan. Uh, when Apostle Rimer was reading the prayer, reading, right, uh, we uh, recognized that this is definitely a new person. I had lightness and I feel so much strength and I feel better. I had our um, deliverance from the curse of witchcraft during the prayer. Hallelujah. Keep writing us, testify. We also have a Bella online with us, and she's from Karaganda City. And something happened, something incredible happened in her life due, uh, based on because she is she uh, because of her partnership. Hello. Christ is risen. He's really risen. When Apostle Rim was praying, I just didn't feel good, really. I still have these uh, symptoms. I think you're uh, uh, having deliverance now. Yeah, thank God. Just want to testify in 2004, my brother uh, asked me to put my name on his, um, uh, on his, uh, uh, on the registration of his car. And um, after uh, after two years, he, he just uh, he during these two years he got into trouble and and um, I received some letter that I owe like one twenty thousand. But I didn't pay attention because uh, my brother told me that he sold the car. And I couldn't even fly to other uh, to um, because they just uh, because I had a financial debt. And somebody sent me the video of Apostle Arimer. I didn't pay attention to that seriously at first. But then I started to watch. I started to uh, hear what he was talking about. I was, on, I was on the big pressure because I had this financial debt. And I sent the uh, voice message to Apostle Adimir and he prayed for me. I've heard about the partnership, but I didn't know how to donate partnership finances because I didn't have money. 
I went, I sold my, and then I re decided to sold my jewelry, and then I donated. And then I, um, I paid my taxes, 300,000. And I was trying to get rid of uh, not paying those taxes, but uh, they were just uh, told me, they told me that you don't have any out, uh, the way out not paying those taxes. And then I met one woman. And uh, then I met one woman. And he, she said to me, do not pay taxes. Let's see what's going to happen. And then when I was, uh, because of the partnership finances that I donated, I, um, I had a court hearing and uh, I won this uh, case. And, uh, and all my family became a partners. Thank God for everything. Thank you so much, Bella, for this testimony. You said that it was impossible because uh, it was impossible to get rid of that uh, to get rid of this financial debt. Imagine, dear friends, uh, she couldn't even fly. You know, uh, they, uh, they just uh, and right now they nullified her financial debt. It's amazing. People keep writing us, I just want to read it. Olga is writing us. When Apostle Vladimir was praying uh, for healing uh, of female, female organs and for the healing of spine, and I had a heat going through my body, and, and, um, and I'm writing to you right now, and I believe that I got my healing. Somebody is writing from Kazakhstan. Apostle Vladimir said the word of knowledge about the throat, and um, I believe that my mom got healed. She fell asleep uh, because she couldn't sleep normally before. Thank God for Apostle Vladimir's prayer. Hallelujah. And uh, God not only touches people on physical level, He also touches people on emotional level. And, uh, and um, you will see how God will move powerfully in soul healing when uh, Pastor Victoria will be praying. I'm in big expectancy. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to that prayer. I see how uh, when Pastor Victoria prays, God always heals uh, some dark parts of your souls, and you might even forget about these things in your past, uh, from your past. And when Victoria starts to pray, basically God uh, takes you back uh, to your past and reminds you about some um, things that. Uh, help you to um, uh, to be healed um, emotionally. Yeah. 
Dear friends, I just want to talk to some people uh, uh, I know we have tough situations in uh, tough situation in Ukraine, but I want you, uh, um, those sisters from our uh, mission, to testify. We have Pastor Luba with us, and we have Svetlana. Are you with us? Uh, would you? Uh, we would like to talk to you. Hello, God. Uh, Christ is risen. He's truly risen. I just want to share how the partnership finances actually, when you donate partnership finances, how they protect your life. My, my, my family member, he, uh, he my, my son, uh, he went to the war and he was trapped. And I was praying to God, please get him out of the air because he uh, he's a partner and it was the and then it was the second phase of the war and I was and he was called me already to say goodbye because he, they were they were just uh, trapped there and I started to pray and we were praying and praying and praying and it was a fear and I didn't know already what to say to God I was saying I'm a VIP partner I'm a VIP partner Apostle Redeemer said that you protect people's lives because of the partnership finances. You said that you protect lives based on sacrifice. I was already... Um, I couldn't find like uh, any, any words already how to pray. And I felt like I need to call my son. And my son was uh, in dis devastated. And he said that his friend uh, got, got, uh, got injured into head. And I said to him that don't be afraid, you're a partner, don't be afraid. And it was a service, and he called me, and he said that we got out of that trap. And... Um, and I'm so thankful to God that I'm in this church. And I'm so thankful for our living church, for that. I'm so thankful for, uh, to God for Apostle Edimir, for, uh, for his living word about finances. I'm so thankful. And I was asking God, I was asking, I was praying to God to protect Apostle Edimir because God protects saves many lives through the prayers of Apostle Redeemer. People get healings, people get joy through his prayers, through his teachings. I'm so thankful to God for every one of you, for every member of the church. 
I'm so grateful that I'm part of the mission. I'm so grateful to God that I'm in the, uh, um, I'm in the living church. I thank God for TV Cross. I thank you so much. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have a testimony as well. Let me read it. Thank God. God really has mercy on people. And it's so, um, it's really painful to hear this kind of situations because when Pastor Tanya was talking to those people to prepare the testimonies before the broadcast, she was crying. And, um, and uh, one of our uh, partners also, she uh, she just wrote us and she said that she didn't want her son to go to the uh, to the army uh, to the war, and uh, but she was a partner and she believed the God that he won't go and and he was discharged because uh, and it, really it was uh, it was impossible but uh, he didn't go to the war to war and uh, we really thank our uh, apostle and victoria for their dedication we cannot stop thanking to our uh, God's people that they move, they walk with God, they uh, move in the Holy Spirit, they move in the prophecy gifts, in prophetic gifts. And when we listen to these prayers, right, uh, how they actually uh, uh, say these prophetic uh, words so, like, precisely. Allah was... Allah was right and uh, Allah wrote us uh, when Apostle Vladimir was talking about the love of the Heavenly Father I had a doubts about it my um, my dad was beating my mom and uh, we were thrown away from the house and uh, when I was a child and I had an unforgiveness for my father and now I have a love for my father uh, dear, uh, I got love uh, to my father and forgiveness for him imagine how people experience the love of, from the heavenly father it's a gift it's a real gift from God it's a real gift to experience the love of the Heavenly Father. Apostle Rimer just, uh, another testimony. Apostle Rimer just uh, um, prayed for the healing of female organs. And uh, she got deliverance. Thank God, uh, people experience uh, the... Um, uh, we, uh, we have many messages here. Oksana is writing us. And she has she got a healing of, uh, of uh, um, sure, uh, she had a healing of her tailbone. We just want to share you one one testimony of one um, lady. And uh, let's watch the testimony of our Olga.
последних неделях беременности очень сильно ухудшилось самочувствие. Her skin was greenish black, and she could hardly breathe. The patient's condition is extremely severe. My husband and I were looking forward to having our second child. My pregnancy went well. When we find out, out that the baby was a girl, we named her Alice right away, and they gave me a copy of the ultrasound image, and I talked to the baby all the time. During the last weeks of pregnancy, I started feeling much worse. She was constantly out of breath, and when she coughed, it looked as though she was about to throw up. I felt so sick that I couldn't sleep, I would, I would get up at night to throw up, and I had a severe cough. I couldn't eat anything for two weeks. I was really worried about my baby. I thought, uh, I thought, okay, I can, I can do without food, but my baby needs nutrition. She was so weak that she couldn't even stand straight. It was a huge effort for her. She had to either sit down or hold, hold on to something. I was, I was running a high fever. We tried to take it out using children's do uh, doses of fever reducers, but my temperature would always rush up again. I was so upset, so worried. I came to the hospital. They, t they tested me and told me that I had a COVID. COVID infection is often associated with high fever. Once the temperature rises above 103, it puts the baby's development at risk. Several, several of the Eurohin's family members got sick with COVID at the same time. Mom, dad, two brothers and their sister, they all suffered from high fever, terrible headaches and a loss of smell and taste. The father and their younger son had pneumonia on top of that. They tried to treat themselves at home. The doctor said if you had waited a couple more days, the situation would have become critical. For a pregnant woman, COVID is a real challenge. According to statistics, pregnant women end up in ICU six times more often than other women their age. During the last 24 hours, over 14,000 new cases of COVID have been registered in Ukraine. It's two and a half thousand more than yesterday. The number of hospitalized patients has doubled and is now at 5,000. There are more fatalities to 342 patients have died during the last 24 hours. This is the highest number registered in Ukraine ever, ever since the beginning of the pandemics. We were shocked by the news. I was really worried. I remember sitting in the waiting room. Deep on the inside, I felt hysterical. It was a feeling you can only experience a few times in your life. They told me I had to be hospitalized immediately because they could barely hear the baby. They also told me that I didn't have enough amniotic fluid that the baby was too small, only about five pounds. The doctor told me everything looked bad. Blessed is he, is he who considers the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Psalm 41, 1. Many people think uh, this way today. Who on earth am I? And what does my partnership money mean? Listen to me. Your partnership money is like a seed. And it's very important, first of all, to you. You need it because if you become a sower, you will see the glory of God. You will see God's miracles manifested in your life. It's written further in Psalm 41 that when the person gets sick, a more modern translation puts it this way, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. My husband and I became partners several years ago. It was a serious decision. We knew that God cares for his partners. We saw miracles in other partners' lives. Their lives got transformed. They had nice apartments, good health, everything they needed. And we knew that God was the only one who could help us based on our partnership. I suddenly had an idea. I would make my uh, granddaughter, Alice, who wasn't even born yet, a partner. 
Tanya, there is an urgent prayer need. Pastor Luba's daughter is in critical condition and she has just been hospitalized. So I just forwarded the little baby's, uh, baby Alice's partnership money. Praying. Thank you for caring for us. Olga is feeling much better. We are waiting for the baby to be born. When Pastor Luba called me and let me know that her daughter was in critical condition in the maternity ward, that she asked me to pray for Olga and to register this still unborn baby as a partner. So I sent the money in right away. I'll also send a message to Tanya Morovyova, the manager of the partnership department. I told her how critical the situation was and asked her to pray. The answer came about a minute later. Just listen, something incredible happened. Only a few mon moments later, I felt peace. It was no longer worry. Uh, I was no longer worried and I saw that my daughter, whose skin had been greenish black all the time, suddenly turned white. My cough was gone. I had a very nasty cough before. I had been throwing up all the time, and suddenly it was gone. The fever was gone. Everything was fine. My cheeks turned pink. The baby was fine, too. She was moving inside of me. The doctors could hear her moving. Everything was normal. How can God do such a thing? The answer came immediately. How is that even possible? It was an amazing miracle. The doctors had absolutely no explanation for that. They were clueless. They just spread their arms, you know. They couldn't figure out what had caused the drastic improvement. My diagnosis was bad, but my symptoms were critical. The, the doctors told me that I would need a C-section, but to everyone's surprise, I delivered the baby myself. It only took 15 minutes for the baby to be born, and I didn't have a single tear. Everything was great. On top of that, the baby didn't weigh 5 pounds. Her weight was a healthy 7 pounds. It was amazing. We had so much joy. We were happy. They got discharged from the hospital very soon, as though she hadn't even had any COVID. They hadn't, uh, they hadn't even, uh, they hadn't given her any treatment. She simply spent a few di days uh, there, and then they discharged her. The baby is perfectly healthy. My daughter is perfectly healthy. The baby is still doing great. She's healthy, happy, and peaceful. She smiles at everyone. She lets everyone pick her up. The baby girl is growing up and feeling feeling healthy, everything is great, her mom, dad, grandmas and grandpas are ecstatic. I know that God alone could do that. I see the hand of God in that situation because everyone in my family is a partner. God alone could do that. All my friends have registered their partners, their children, their siblings and their grandchildren's partners. We know that the true meaning of partnership. We know the true meaning of partnership. When you're a partner, you have faith. And the Bible says that God himself will come and restore you. Do you know what God does when we are partners? I can share it with all of, of our TV viewers. I believe it with all my heart. God drives all evil away from us. A lot of negative things uh, could have happened to us, but none of them are happening. We don't even know about those things. This is the true meaning of God's glory. It's true. Everything our apostle says, everything Pastor Victoria says is true. Those things really change people's lives. There was a problem, and now it's gone. There was a grief, and all of a sudden happiness came. Isn't that something? Every, everyone wants. I want to thank our apostle uh, for our partnership. We are all partners. We register our children, our loved ones, everyone who is precious to us. And God answers us. In our situation, God answered on the basis of our partnership. He merely said, mother and baby, be alive. We thank God for everything. I thank God for our family, for our two kids, for healthy and beautiful girls. And I do thank the Apostle and Pastor Victoria for their teaching and their ministry. It's because of their teaching that we know about partnership. It's because of their teaching that our kids are alive and all is well. 
If you're still not a partner, if you're not part of the World Revival Mission, if you have never heard about, about Apostle Vladimir and Pastor Victoria, you need to sign up, become partners, become part of the World Revival Mission, listen to the messages and prayers, and you will see how your life will bubble with joy, happiness, triumph, and God's greatness. You know, I was a witness of that uh, story because I was serving God in partnership department that period of time. And I remember how uh, Pastor Luba made a decision to, uh, for, uh, to make her unborn a grandchild uh, uh, partner, to be a partner. And I remember how we were part, uh, we were praying for her. And uh, after a few minutes, she called us, and uh, she called us, and she said everything is changed. And doctors were just um, amazed, you know. And we see how they're happy now. And this uh, child is healthy now, and he's full of joy. And this is a great happiness because partnership is a um, protection for every person who is a partner today. I just want to thank God how he uh, answers the praise so fast, how he protects his partners. Hallelujah. Dear friends, and now we have our Pastor Victoria in our studio now. Hello, Victoria. Christ is risen. Christ, he's truly risen. Christ is risen. He's truly risen. Christ is risen. He's truly risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. На этой земле люди переживают встречу с Богом. Люди переживают спасение. And we see how people experience um, God's miracles in, in their lives. Представьте себе, какое счастье. Вот каждый из нас, мы каждое свое время пережили встречу с Богом. And look, um, I just want to tell everyone that every one of us, we experience the encounter with God uh, in our lives, right? And actually turn our life upside down. And I will pray uh, soon. I was just meditating on Easter today and uh, what God uh, did for every one of us. And I had such a uh, strong desire to, te to tell you a couple words and then pray for that. When, when it was Easter, uh, the Easter, Easter has uh, its own meaning. And at that moment, um, 
Jewish people were in slavery for 400 years, and then God told Moses to bring out those Jewish people uh, out of the um, slavery. And it was a fight with Pharaoh there. And you know this story, right? And you can't even, you can't even uh, imagine how come it was like 10... Um, it was 10 um, executions there, and it was like uh, water, uh, like a sea f full of uh, uh, blood, you know, it, then it was frogs were just coming there, and then it was... Uh, and uh, after every execution, uh, Pharaoh was getting uh, more and more angry, and um, he, he didn't want to let Jewish people go. And then it was 10 execution, 10th execution came. And then it was 10th execution came. And then God told Moses about the angel destroyer, how he will go through the whole Egypt, and he will he will kill every firstborn. But God uh, gave warning to uh, Jewish people: uh, you know, if you don't want, if if you don't want to happen to you, so you need to take a lamp. And uh, get together with your family. And I want to emphasize what I'm talking about, because um, God is touching my heart today uh, constantly about it. God uh, told in the Bible to get together with the old family and prepare the lamb. But before, uh, before. Um, um, that just uh, you need to uh, put the blood of that lamp on the doorpost. Everyone, everyone knows what a, uh, what is doorpost. So imagine every doorpost was uh, with the blood of the lamp, was covered with the blood of the lamp. And when, when the and God kept telling them uh, Mo Moses that he, and when the angel destroyer will go through the Egypt, when he will see the um, he will see the blood on the doorpost, he will not strike those uh, uh, firstborns. And th that mean that means deliverance. And listen to me um, carefully. And God told to prepare this lamb and eat, eat this lamb with the whole family. If your family is not big, just uh, uh, call your neighbors. It's very important to eat the lamb together with all your family. There is a, he, there is a secret in that, to get together with your family. Let's uh, go uh, to the past, to the time where uh, it, it was all happening. Look at your houses now, and imagine that you uh, live. You live in a. Um, you live uh, with your neighbors. 
вообще не знает, вы просто Maybe you don't know some neighbors, maybe you just saw them. That's all. Каждый, вот представьте, что ваш весь дом это дом евреев. And imagine your house uh, with all this family. This is the house of Jewish people. And every door of post, every door post is uh, covered with the blood of, uh, with the blood of, uh, of the lamp. And the most important thing, everyone has to stay in that house at that particular night when the angel destroyer will come. Because angel destroyer was passing through the houses and he didn't touch those people who were in those houses where he saw the blood of the lamp. And I was just trying to imagine how it's going to be right now on these days. It's very important to do this that no one will be left behind the doors. No one uh, from your family uh, be left uh, behind the doors. Я помню историю, которую рассказывал мне мой любимый драгоценный Вовочка, наш апостол. Он рассказывал о том, как покаялась его мама. Сегодня он говорил о ней, и знаете, действительно, я была свидетелем того, насколько уникальной была эта женщина. Это действительно был настоящий герой. Мы брали у нее пример, ее любви, ее посвящения, посвящения своим детям, посвящение своим внукам. Вы знаете, мы могли э, ночью, а мы были всегда, мы всегда служили Богу. Мы всегда служили Богу. Мы служили Богу, и мы делаем это по сей день, и мы будем делать это до, до последнего дня, пока мы будем здесь на земле. И если там на небесах нужно будет служить дальше, мы будем служить дальше. И вот мы всегда служили, и были моменты, когда, представьте, у нас трое малышей, например, Виолетти, Годик, Арине три, Дани пять. Ну, вот если они все трое, представьте себе, как весело. Что такое, когда трое малышей, они вообще в, одном, в одной комнате. И представьте себе, были какие моменты, когда мы могли вот так среди ночи, нам нужно было куда-то ехать. У нас всегда было служение, у нас всегда было какие невероятные проекты. И тут нам нужна помощь, чтобы с детками бабушка посидела. И мы могли среди ночи приехать, постучать маме в двери. И она среди ночи, всегда была одинаковая реакция. Она открывала двери. И знаешь, по-любому ты ожидаешь, ну, что э, человека разбудили. Плюс всех троих привезли. А у бабушки, у нее, знаешь, часто... Вообще практически постоянно. У нее было очень сильное давление, у нее болела голова. Вот после того, как э, Вовочкин отец, он избивал ее, с тех пор у нее страшные головные боли были всю жизнь. И знаешь, вот ей было очень плохо, но каждый раз, когда она открывала двери, мы видели одну и ту же картину. Она улыбалась, она смотрела на нас такими глазами, с такой радостью, как будто она вот только вот сидела и ждала. Ну когда же наконец-то они привезут мне всех троих? Вот обязательно всех троих. 
Мы понимали, насколько это тяжело. Мы сами, мы сильные, молодые. Но бывало вот так вот, ты час находишься, когда все трое малышей в одной комнате, и все, ты не выдерживаешь. Надо как-то их занять чем-то, развести по разным комнатам бывает. Но она всегда была счастлива, она вот так вот обнимала их, забирала. Чуть ли не бывало, нам надо же было сразу уехать. И она так вот забирала, говорит, все, 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 не переживайте. И в этом всегда был ну, такой ответ. Такой ответ. И знаешь, я вспоминаю сейчас это. Вспоминаю маму, вспоминаю все эти события. И понимаю одно. Вот как важно, когда весь твой дом служит Господу. И вот когда мой любимый Вовочка, он пришел к Богу, его семья еще была не спасена. Но он был тот человек, который никогда бы не смирился с тем, что вот он знает Бога, его жизнь изменилась. А рядом его самый родной человек, его мама, она не знает Бога. И он проповедовал ей, он говорил ей, а мама говорила одно и то же. «Вовочка, я тебя так люблю, ты мой родной, дорогой сыночек, но, пожалуйста, я вот тут побуду в воскресенье на диванчике, я тяжело работаю». Она работала всю свою жизнь, она работала э, на заводе токарем, она уходила, в, не знаю, наверное, в 6 утра она уходила на работу. И целый день она стояла у станка. Зимой это был холод ужасный, летом была эта ужасная жара. Она работала постоянно. Она говорила, Вовочка, ну дай мне вот это одно воскресенье. She was working all the time. И отдохну. She was working three shifts. Что настоящая, у наш отдых, что настоящая жизнь, она только в Боге. And Вовочка knew that uh, the real life, it's only in God. And uh, her mom, uh, her mom always was uh, saying, uh, his mom always saying to her that stop preaching me. And one day, uh, Vovachka find out that uh, if he, uh, if he's not gonna be, uh, if he's not gonna convince uh, her mom today. And he said to her that, uh, "Mom, if you love me, you will. Uh, if you love me, you will come to the, to the church with me." And it was such a power in his words. Uh, his mom agreed right away to go to the church. And when she came to the church, she experienced the power of God right away. Мы э, служили, мы, мы там покаялись, мы там служили везде, во всем. Вовочка там всегда был первый, но он еще не был проповедником, он еще не был пастором. Тогда у нас был пастор Федор, э, Федор Евтихович Саган, великий муж Божий, сейчас он на небесах. И вот он проповедовал, она сидела... In our pastor, uh, uh, we had a pastor, Федор, that time, she, he's on heaven right now, and when he... Uh, when he started, uh, he was preaching, and um, she he, she told us that she felt like a healing from hip hypertension, like a like a river was going through, uh, like a uh, going uh, behind her, like a bat uh, behind her uh, head there, and she she experienced the miracle from God. And then she said one phrase that I will never, uh, I will never uh, leave that church. And then, and every Sunday she always prepared herself for church. It was such a, um, it was a tradition for her uh, to prepare herself for uh, for church service. And now she's in heaven. But it was so important for Vovachka, for my lovely husband, to convince her, to insist, um, to insist, you know, to convince her mom uh, to go to church. It was the moment. And I want to tell you today, God wants to move 
not only in your uh, life, he wants to move also in your family. And uh, it was the reason uh, why God told uh, Jewish people to get together as one family. It was a principle. And the, uh, then there was a scripture was born, like, when you serve God, all your house will serve God. And we see how uh, our later relatives can be in shackles uh, and they can suffer and they can, uh, they don't have, a, uh, they have empty heart, they uh, have a bad future and they suffer. And we cannot look at this. We cannot look at the sufferings of our family members. And that's what we believe and we pray. We believe and pray. I want to tell you one thing. It depends on what you um, uh, made a decision to believe. And it's very important to not give up to, uh, to uh, quit, you know. And I always tell this story how uh, my lovely husband, Apostle Vladimir, prayed for my salvation because it was the greatest miracle in my, of my life. The other miracles that I had, it was just um, consequences. And I remember how he was praying and how he came to me first uh, uh, that day. We didn't, uh, we were not together for five years already. Devil separated, separated us from each other. We've been married um, when uh, we were 17 years old, and we loved, uh, we loved each other so much. And devil controls a person's life, and he always has a goal to make us unhappy. The greatest pain the greatest pain is the pain of your relatives, for, of your loved ones. The biggest, uh, thing, the biggest problem is uh, when you have a problem in your family. And devil knows devil knows that every person uh, needs, uh, needs to have her, uh, his loved one together. And when God created Adam, and Adam has everything he, needs, he needed, and God saw that um, sadness in his eyes, and he uh, made a decision to... Um, to uh, he made a decision to create a uh, helper for Adam, and he created Eve, and he created Eve from the rib of Adam, in order to be together always, to be together as one. The, because devil knows when the family um, serve God together. When they know God, all, when all family knows God, um, that's very powerful, and they can move the po uh, mountains, you know, on, because they together, they can uh, walk through anything in their lives. That's why devil always, um, um, always hurt families. Why we have so many divorces? Why we have so many uh, children without parents? Uh, 
Why so many people have our betrayals from their loved ones, from their ma family members especially? And some people, they are just lonely. Uh, they have loneliness. They are lonely in their lives. Uh, lives. And, uh, but the most terrible thing is divorce. The most terrible thing is uh, people with their uh, emotional wounds. The most terrible thing uh, um, is unhappy children. For, for example, if, they do, uh, if uh, parents divorced and they have children, those children, they already have a curse of divorce on their lives. And when they grow up, they they get married, but they, but they, didn't, they won't have a clue why they're going to have divorce. Because the devil will perform his evil work upon them. Listen to me. We haven't been together with my Vovachka. He already had a counter with God. And God started to knock to, his, uh, to the door of his heart that uh, he needs to come to my house. It was impossible, really, because um, we just, um, we just uh, met each other a couple times during this five years, and I was just laughing at him. I was just, you know, and uh, but he came anyway to my house, and uh, I was, and it was the time when I was ready to listen to him finally. And my lovely husband started to pray for me for my salvation. For one month and a half, he was praying. And before my salvation, he, before us, and um, uh, his, sis, his sister, uh, he came to the, uh, to, uh, his, he came uh, to, um, he came home, and his sister prepared some soup, and he was about to eat, but he decided to prepare, to pray, and then God told him that um, he put a burden up about me on his heart. Like if he he uh, if he won't prove if he won't uh, pray until uh, if he won't pray until uh, uh, until my salvation and he didn't know how much it's gonna be. But he said to God that he will be. Uh, he said to God that I will be fasting and praying until she will give her life to Christ. And she stopped eating. He stopped eating, excuse me. He, he was not even fasting yet, but he just, he didn't want to eat. He just... And he couldn't eat for a few days, and then he just started fasting for me. Because he was he was fighting uh, for me on that prayer. He was coming to me. He was taking uh, me to the serv church services. I didn't understand anything there. But I was I was uh, I was looking for the way out uh, because I already had a um, terrible situation in my life. But he was uh, uh, my lovely husband. He was uh, he kept praying for me. But he saw. But he didn't see any changes in in me. And uh, once he already uh, had this thought that everybody can um, can um, can accept Jesus, but not only uh, her, because I was so um, I was behaving so badly. I didn't believe in God. I, I I didn't believe that God can do anything for me. 
And uh, one day it was like I left the church, I left him. And Vovachka uh, had such a big stress that moment. He will also will talk about it. He uh, experienced so much pain. He didn't know what to do. And then he, saw, has, he sat down in his chair and he was trying to find something, some support from the Bible. And then he, uh, he found, uh, he, 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 he noticed the book, um, Cross, the name of the book was Cross and Knife and, uh, by David Wilkerson. And that pastor, uh, he was preaching to the um, gangs of New York. And, it was a, and he started to read some story there. And David Wilkerson came to his father at that story, in that story. And he's, he said to his father, I don't know what to do. I keep reaching to those um, criminals, but the, I see that there is um, no way that can, they can give their lives to Christ. And then his father took uh, his father um, uh, told some story about snake when you see um, when you see snake uh, and uh, it was a period of time it was a season of time when he, this snake um, takes um, his old skin off and he, it has a new skin. So don't, don't look at his old skin now. Look, look at, at God's calling. Look, look, look under this uh, old skin. Look deep. There. And when Vovachka um, uh, uh, read this word, she re he realized that do not look what uh, on her on her uh, behavior right now. Look uh, into um, look inside. You know, look under the uh, old skin. And, uh, and it gave him her, um, strength to move forward to pray for me. And um, after one month and a half, I, one day I fell, on, I fell on my knees. I was crying out so much. I don't know how long I was crying there. I was repenting my sins. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit, he gave me and he baptized me with a... He baptized me and I was born again. So I fell on my knees of one person and when I got up from my knees, I became a different person. I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and I was absolutely different person. And and we were invited in different churches with my Vovachka. And they were asking us to talk about this miracle. And actually, we got married after that second time. And I thank God, I thank God every day for my husband. I thank God for my husband every day, for his love. Thank God for his love, for his faithfulness, for his faith. Thank God for, um, for who he is. I thank God. I thank God that it was the moment when God was knocking the door of his heart. He didn't quit. And 
and uh, we're uh, 32 years together and our love is getting stronger and stronger and this is a miracle I can't even um, find the words to explain to um, to explain our relationship how uh, because it was because of the this courageous faith that he had so you need to have this unstoppable faith that will make your parents will make your family members that will make them uh, believers don't let this uh, thing happen when you only be uh, in that house uh, where is the blood of the lamb co um, cover, uh, cover the house. Just make sure that your family members be with you. Just, uh, just say it. We, uh, just you have to say it right now, Devil. I'm, I won't give my husband to you. I won't give my uh, wife to you. I won't give my friends to you. I won't give my children to you. I won't give my uh, uh, people that I know. I won't give it to you. I, will, I won't give them to you. Every salvation is different. So God is leading you uh, different. Um, and God was leading uh, my uh, Vovachka in um, how to talk to me, how to... How to um, how to, how to talk to me, how to behave uh, with me. And uh, some people preaching like it's really scary, you know. And I know, I remember one person that he was complaining to me. He said, like, um, I was preaching to everyone already. They already scared of me. I don't know who to preach already. Because um, he, uh, he was preaching um, not sincerely, let's say. When we, uh, when we preach to our family members, ask the Holy Spirit how to act with uh, that family member or that family member because everyone is in uh, individual. Just don't let them stand behind the door. Just make a decision right now that make a decision that you won't let any divorce or separation happen in your family. And I believe I believe in that very much. Uh, you will have uh, you will have what you will believe in. Bible says that God, God uh, only can be pleased with your faith. Faith opens the door for incredible miracles. So if you make a decision to believe that my family will, uh, will be together again if, if, if your family is separated. I believe uh, 
that my loved, uh, that all my family members, we all uh, serve together God. If you will believe in that, if you uh, believe that my generation will be blessed, that I will be that person, I will be that person that God brings the blessing through me into my into my generation. I'm going to be that person. I'm going to be that person that God brings the blessing into my generation. If you not, if you don't give up, if you if you don't give up, they will won't do anything. If you don't quit, even you will see darkness upon you, and you will see like uh, nothing can be changed. This is the moment when devil is defeated. Because the, after the darkness, you always will see sunrise. When Jesus was on the cross, when the priest pierced his hands, and he was hanging there on the cross, and the devil was uh, in triumph, and he was thinking, finally, finally, the Son of God, he is hanging there on the cross. I didn't, uh, I'm one. And he was thinking that way, that he, he won. But at that moment, actually, at that moment, there was the greatest thing happening. And when Jesus said, it's finished, Karalasa, at that moment, the devil realized that he was thinking that he got the victory. He actually had the um, biggest failure in his life, and it was forever. Listen to me. Listen to me. Чтобы наши близкие, родные, друзья, люди, которые дороги нашему сердцу, они были обмануты сатаной. Don't you want your family members to be deceived by devil? Devil is defeated. And the Bible says, Jesus, Jesus gave, gave um, victory to all believers. He gave you victory to you. He gave you victory over, over devil, over demons and evil spirits. And that's why we are praying. And when we command those demons and evil spirits to get out, they leave because they don't have a right to be in our lives. Because behind our words, there is the power of Jesus Christ. There is a, there is a victory, there is a victory of Jesus Christ behind um, our words. That's why it's not just the words. This is his power. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why listen to me. It depends on what you believe in. If you believe that your family will be happy, it will be so. Second question is when, but you have to know it will be. 
it will be so. Do you believe that your family members, your, your uh, friends that you know, they will experience God? If you believe in that, it will be so. Right now, I want to pray for you. And I have a strong desire to pray for families, especially those families who have divorces, who have a discord, who has uh, emotional wounds, who, who has a broken souls. I want God to come and perform his miracle. Let the devil be defeated in every family, in every house. Let the sacrifice of Jesus Christ be your victory. Be your victory in your family, in your house. Dear friend, if I'm talking about your issue right now, that you have a problem in your family, close your eyes, put your hand on yourself. If you're close to each other right now and you know that you have a problem in your relationship, so just um, took each, uh, take each other's hand. Holy Spirit, pray, oh, touch with your power. Touch with your power. I ask you, Holy Spirit, come into every house now. Come into every family now. Precious Holy Spirit, come to every house, to every family. Let demons be defeated. And right now, I command the demons of discord and divorce to get out the spirits of misunderstanding, conflicts, scandals, demons, I command you, get out. I break the curse of divorce right now. Right now, the spirit of divorce, the generational spirit of divorce is broken now in the name of Jesus. Right now, Holy Spirit, touch with your power. Touch with your power. I agree. I just want to pray with those women who have uh, their husbands addicted to alcohol, to drugs. And I take you with, uh, by your hand, dear sister. And I want to pray with you. The spirit of alcoholism to go away. Get out. The curse of addiction. Let it be broken. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Gener the generational curse of alcoholism is broken. Let this curse be broken right now. This second. Holy Spirit come into their lives. Holy Spirit, come into those uh, into those husbands' lives. Let the devil be defeated. And we we believe in you, God, and we receive your victory now. It's happening now. Right now, these supernatural things are happening. Holy Spirit is uh, moving in the in the minds of those husbands who are addicted. Holy Spirit is moving in your head, um, in the head, in the heads of uh, husbands or of, of men who are addicted. Uh, with um, drugs and gambling. 
right now i break the spirit of addiction right now the curse of alcoholism uh, is broken upon women right now in the name of jesus right now holy spirit shows me a girl 10 years old uh, her parents are um, drinking uh, they have a severe drinking problem and this girl, girl heard uh, that she ne uh, the prayer will help, and, um, and uh, I'm talking to her mom right uh, to her mom right now. This is your daughter is praying for you, and Holy Spirit touch is touching you and your husband, and Holy Spirit is uh, uh, giving you freedom right now. The curse of alcoholism is broken upon your family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right now, I pray in agreement prayer with mothers and fathers who pray for their children and your children have addictions alcoholism drugs they are in the shackles they are in the slavery of these addictions right now and i pray in agreement prayer with you let this curse of addiction be broken upon these children i break the shackles right now of addictions holy spirit comes into those children's lives i'm prophesying to you dear parents of those children god started to work in uh, your children's lives right now you will see with your uh, with your own eyes they will start to, they will start to say something that it's gonna it's gonna amaze you and you will realize this is God is moving in their lives and you will see they will turn to God you will see because we believe today together and we made a decision do not give up you we made a decision to take the, your children from the hands of the devil, and it will happen. And it's happening now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right now, Holy Spirit shows me a family. It's a husband and a wife, and you have our, uh, children, teenagers. A few years ago, everything was ruined in your life. Your business is ruined. Your children are unhappy. And I'm talking to the woman right now. You're watching me now. You have a suicidal thoughts every night. Right now, this curse, this inflicted curse is broken right now in the name of Jesus. There was inflicted curse. Somebody put a spell on you because the, uh, somebody envied you. And I'm talking to the families right now who have inflicted curse upon, the, uh, upon you. Somebody put a spell on you uh, that a uh, husband will leave the family or wife will leave the family. So, and I just I break this inflicted curse right now upon your family right now. It's broken now. It's getting broken. I I experience this anointing right now. The curse is broken right now upon the families. The curse is broken. Right now, Holy Spirit shows me a family. You became like a strangers to each other. And I'm talking to a lady right now. You're like a middle-aged lady already. You have a short haircut. you like a little bit um, overweight. And you had a strong love. Uh, and it was inflicted curse. And it's broken right now. At this moment, 
прежним чувством друг к другу. And right now, you, uh, your hearts are filled with new feelings, like uh, actually God uh, multiplied your feelings. This pain uh, just gone from your hearts. And I'm, and, I'm ta- and I'm praying for women who have a pain, emotional pain, because you were raped. You were, uh, uh, you had her um, abuse, or you were raped physically, and I'm just um, destroying this curse of rejection upon your life. The name of Jesus is broken right now. Right now, Holy Spirit is healing your memory. Right now, Holy Spirit is healing your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, let's keep praying, let's keep praying. Oh, Holy Spirit, I break, I destroy the shackles in, in your soul right now. Demon, get out. Holy Spirit shows me, girl, you have a black long hair and you're in depression. Constantly you live in depression, nothing is helping you. And you always have suicidal thoughts. You have this from your childhood. Right now, you got a complete freedom from this. This curse is broken now. There was a generational spirit from the father's side, and it's broken now. Depression is gone. Demon, uh, 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 demon of suicide just left you. Holy Spirit shows me family, it's, a, it's parents and uh, children. And you have a curse from a uh, male side that every, one, every man uh, dies with premature, uh, premature death. And this curse is broken right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. If you have emotional pain, put your hand on yourself. Let your healing come. Let your comfort come. In the name of Jesus, healing in your soul. Let healing in your soul come. Insomnia just gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. And there is a girl who has a paranoid thoughts, like, like somebody is speaking to you into your ear, like um, somebody is speaking to you like a negative thought, uh, like a negative words, and you're not going to have it anymore. The spirit of schizophrenia, get out. The spirit of epilepsy, get out. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit touch. Holy Spirit touch. Right now, um, Holy Spirit shows me a man. You have a, like a mental uh, problem. You just don't understand things that normal uh, like uh, other people understand. And Holy Spirit just touches your mind right now. And he, he is healing you now. He is healing your mind. The Holy Spirit just touched elderly person. And you have an Alzheimer's disease. And it's already uh, like, a, uh, last, uh, like a almost last stage. And you have a healing now. 
And, and uh, right now, Holy Spirit shows me a woman, an elderly woman, who has a problems with her uh, memory, like a sclerosis you have. You have a healing right now. If you have a problems uh, with your um, uh, mind, with your uh, memory, healing is coming into your brain right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Right now, dear friends, Wherever you are right now, let's do something. Let's take our hands and let's pray on this Easter TV crusade. Let's uh, pray for our uh, family members to be saved. That we can really say this, um, we can see the scripture real in our lives. That you serve God and your, all your family will be serving God as well. Let's take our hands together and let's believe in that. Holy, precious Holy Spirit, we ask you right now, please perform your miracle now. We ask you, Lord, please touch our family members, our loved ones. Touch every family. Touch every person in our family. Please let, let, let every person do not stay behind the door. Let every let all our family members, our friends experience the salvation from you, God. We pray to you, God. Salvation into every house. Let's say together. Salvation into every house. Salvation into every house in the name of Jesus. Let this year be the salvation of many families, of many generations. Let it be so. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God glory. We also have prayer requests here. Let's pray in agreement prayer. Stretch your hands, dear TV viewers. Holy Spirit, just please come into every person's lives uh, here. Come into every situation and we destroy any disease and we command the devil to go away right now in the name of Jesus and we break the spirit of cancer right now we break the spirit of death right now in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus and we command all those diseases to go away we command all those tough circumstances to change. We command the devil to go away from those people's lives. Let every curse be destroyed. Let your victory, uh, let your victory come upon those people's lives. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's also pray for peace in Ukraine on this Easter day. I'm sure on this Easter day, Ukraine needs... Uh, ...needs deliverance. Everyone in Ukraine, they need Christ today. And we are praying for you, dear Ukraine. And we believe in every one of you. We are, um, we, are, we, are we stand in faith for Ukraine. And we know that Christ 
и дьявол is, uh, is already bringing the victory and devil will be defeated. Almighty God, we pray for Ukraine. Just come in Ukraine on this Easter day, on this deliverance day. Let your peace come into Ukraine. Let your victory come into Ukraine. We pray to you, God. Lord, come, come to Ukraine. Come to Ukraine. Let your peace come in Ukraine. We pray for every person who is in Ukraine. Protect every person. Protect every person. Be the one who will protect. Let you bring your angels to feed people, to protect people. We ask you, Lord, reveal your glory in Ukraine in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that we know that you're God who answers. Amen. Amen. Glory to our God. Glory to our God. In the name of Jesus. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. And my friends, school new life, that's what I was preaching about, actually. School new life, this is, is your house. And you can have a real life with God and the, on this school. All these demons and evil spirits will, uh, will live um, a, uh, on every lesson on every prayer at our school and they will be defeated in every area of your life so definitely register for our school register your family members register your friends and people you know and get together and listen to this lessons and become the students of school new life this is a school for you well my friends this is a great day and today is a great holiday and we are so happy that we have our God in our lives and this is a great and this is greatest happiness for us and we thank God for his privilege to serve him your mission we love you we love you all we are one big family precious ones we love you dear partners we are one big partnership team and we make a God's work on this earth. Thank you so much, dear partners. I know all our mission, they're all partners. Thank you so much. May God bless you on this Easter day. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you. What a great day today. Wow, we have such uh, wonderful parents, right? And we cry and laugh here. It just... Dear friends, we, uh, you can uh, send your donations, your ties and offerings, partnership finances. And we heard many testimonies today based on partnership. And thank God for uh, for teaching uh, of Apostle Vladimir and uh, about the finances, about partnership. And we see how God protects uh, many people because of the partnership. Let's sow our seed and see the protection of God upon our lives because God is always faithful.
please send our, your finances to the, um, and you can see the information uh, on the screen where to send uh, your uh, finances. We definitely have this TV crusade because of our partners. All these TV crusades, satellites that we have, uh, it's, all, uh, it's all thanks to the support of our uh, partners. And it's so great. It's very important to become a partner today. Make sure bring, uh, bring your friends and families into the partnership today. Hallelujah. We have so many testimonies how our partners they uh, experience their healings based on partnership because they are partners. And it's awesome to, uh, to hear about that. Dear friends, we have uh, more, TV, more TV crusades ahead. Next Sunday, we're going to have a TV crusade for Kyrgyzstan. And it's going to be the prayer for the breaking of inflicted curses and generational curses. And Apostle Vladimir will be praying. And we're going to be witnesses of many thousands of testimonies, of many thousands of miracles especially in Kyrgyzstan and other countries as well. Make sure you uh, put your uh, family members to watch this TV crusade. We actually are so lucky that we are close to Apostle Vladimir and Victoria. They pray close to right close to us and it's a big privilege and every time we see how the um, pres the anointing is getting stronger and stronger it's amazing on, on May 8 we're gonna have a TV crusade for Germany and on May 15, there will be TV crusade for Romania and Moldova. There will be incredible time, and we are in big expectancy. We're looking forward to that. And it's so great to be part of that, um, um, of uh, God's work on this earth. And uh, there will be um, home fellowship uh, on this coming Wednesday. And I see many people uh, like our home fellowship. And we are also going to have a school new life uh, uh, next Friday. So, and, so and it's going to be an um, interesting lesson there. The name of the lesson, uh, the topic of the lesson is curse or blessing. And we are so happy to be part of it, to be part of uh, this uh, of, of, uh, of this blessing. And it's so great to uh, be in God's word, in his truth. And we just want to thank again our partners. We want, uh, we want your, uh, we want miracles happen in your life more and more. And again, we want to say big thanks to Apostle Vladimir and Victoria for their dedication, for their love to people, to God. And it's so great. Thank you. Let's give God glory.
служба. Аллилуйя. И вы знаете, дорогие, Glory наше пасхальное служение, оно подходит к концу. Dear Поэтому friends, our Easter service is about to finish. Hug your neighbor. Say to him how you love him. And we are, we are saying goodbye to you now. And we love you all. You're, we are one big family. Christ is risen. He's truly risen. Bye, everyone. Bye, dear family. See you soon. See you this Wednesday. Bye bye. Bye. Glory to our God. Bye everyone. We hear somebody from Germany. We love you all. Dear TV viewers, we have a good news. We have an update. And you can watch our uh, channel in a, in a better um, in 4K. Um, uh, the person has a, um, open, opens the door for the devil to work in his life. The power of God moves right, uh, right through the screen. And you can, um, you can find us through this information.